Tofusu. Um, I'm an assistant lecturer at the University of Ghana. I've been teaching since 2011. Um, I actually, my interest area is in pop dance um, and Afro pop dance. Um, so uh, I introduced the teaching of pop dance at the University of Ghana. Um, actually, I started teaching the pop dance technique uh, before 2011, around 2010. And then um, officially introduced the teaching of pop dance in, uh, I think, 2019, 2020, um, academic year. So now we teach pop dance in theory and practice at the School of Performing Arts. Um, so uh, that's exactly what I've, I've been doing, teaching and I've, I'm also uh, waiting for my PhD results. Uh, right. It's been two years now and I'm still counting. Um, so basically that's what I do. Uh, I also teach traditional dances and, and what have you, but my specialization is pop dance. All right, all right. And I might say that Uncle Terry also celebrated his birthday yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so He's uh, ha happy birthday. <laughs> I, think, I think Faisal is going to um, honor us with a virtual cake today. So uh, we are proud to, to cut the cake and then enjoy ourselves. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start. We're going to go straight into into business. Um, I know, of course, one of maybe one of I, I don't know whether it's right to say one of your areas is Afro 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 pop. I mean, African popular dance. Um, when we say African popular dance, what what do we mean in the first place? Okay, so um, I think that people are trying to read um different uh, meanings into it, into it. Um, and the, the discrepancy um, in the definition of African pop um, stems from the fact that it is a music and dance type. So it is the, the discrepancy is often generated by the music aspect of it. Mm. Okay. But Afro pop, Afrobeat, uh, African popular dance. Mm -hmm. They are all like pop dances. When we are looking at it from the dance perspective, mm -hmm. okay, it is all about all the popular dances across Africa that are put together, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think more so because of... Uh, the influx of information technology and, and, and what have you. The dancers are now put together in a way that gives you that African sense of uh, identity, mm -hmm. you know. And so dancers from Nigeria, dancers from Ghana, South Africa, Congo are all put together, you know, mm -hmm. as uh, one cocktail. And that is what is termed um, Afro pop dance. Okay, so then it means that there is not necessarily any major difference between the Afro beats and Afro pop. Is that is okay? That... So the argument is that the Afro beats are the musical types that were gen. We have some tech issues right there. Um, so we are having a discussion with uh, Mr. Terry Bright of Fosu, um, one of the lecturers of the University of Ghana who has actually done intensive research in African popular dance. Oh, sorry. So you actually froze a little bit. So we didn't catch the last part that you said. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you now. Hello? Oh, 
Okay, so yeah. So he has done very intense um, research. Okay. Um, yeah, we can hear, we can see you uh, now. Is that see me now? Yes, yes, good. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I think we missed the last bit that you said. So okay. So I was, I was arguing that mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Africans in the diaspora, especially those in the, in Europe, <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, more specifically UK, Mm -hmm. are the ones who push the idea of Afrobeats. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, the discrepancy lies in the fact that the term um, Afrobeat I think we have some challenges with our internet. Um, hopefully we're gonna connect soon. Um, so Uncle Terry, oh yeah, I prefer to call him Uncle Terry. Uh, he was actually trying to give us the differences between um, the Afro- Hello, Vrata. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, Hello? Yeah. Yes. Yes. It, it went it went off a Hello, little bit. Yeah, it went off a little bit again. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Hello? But I think you should send him a message. Um, we type message to know what is happening because we can hear him. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, I think yeah the the internet fluctuates at a point. So. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. You can hear me. Yeah. I don't know why we keep getting in and out of. Um, yeah. Contact. I don't know. So can I go on? <clears throat> yes. Yes, you can go on now. Okay. So I was, I was, I, I was saying earlier on that, you know, the Afrobeat thing was started by Fela, you know, the popular musician, Nigerian musician mm -hmm. of blessed memory, yeah. in the early 1970s. Okay. He called his musical type Afrobeat. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then. Osibisa of Ghana also started a musical type they called Afro rock. Mm -hmm. And all these types of music, which were the contemporary type of African music mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. were categorized as Afro pop okay. by Professor Collins. Okay. Mm -hmm. They call them Afro popular music. Mm -hmm. All right. And their dance types that came with them were therefore Afro-popular dance, mm -hmm. okay? <clears throat> now, so this thing has, has been there for some time, okay? Mm -hmm. Until recently, <clears throat> when the terminology, <clears throat> excuse me, when the et terminology Afro-beats with an S at the end of the beat, Fela's own was Afro-beat, mm -hmm. but the current generation added an S to it and made it Afro beats. Okay. And they were trying to argue that the type of music, African contemporary music that emanated from the West, mm -hmm. particularly speaking the UK. All right. Mm -hmm. So they called it Afro beats. Yeah. But these musical types coincided with the amalgamation of the different Afro popular dances hmm. around that time, you understand? And yeah. all these uh, developments was based on the going viral of the Azonto dance of Ghana, hmm. okay? The going viral of the Azonto dance actually stemmed all these uh, efforts by the different African countries to actually counter, you know, the popularity of Azonto. So first of all, Nigerians tried to annex the Azonto dance 
with Alinko, where it did not mm -hmm. work, you know. And then after that, they started churning out some beautiful dances, like Shaku Shaku, like the um, uh, ATK, and then the uh, all these uh, uh, um, Shoki and all these beautiful dances. All right. Meanwhile, so it became like a, 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 a should I say a rat race? Okay. Mm -hmm in all these African countries, all right? Mm -hmm. So they started coming up. South Africa started coming up with a lot of their dance styles, uh, Guara, Guara, and um, uh, I'm a Piano, and all these dances started coming up, all right? Mm -hmm. So then we realized that, hey, these are all African um, um, contemporary dances that are being produced by the youth, mm -hmm. okay? And because of um, the influx of information technology, WhatsApp, Facebook, um, Instagram, what have you. These dances were traveling so fast about the African youth, mm. all right? And because it is organic for us, we are able to easily learn them and put them all together. Mm -hmm. Hence, the, the renaissance of the new Afropop, okay? So, um, the Afropop dances actually are am am amalgamated forms of contemporary African dances that the youth, you know, bring together. And, and, and that is where we are. And so some will call it Afropop dance. Others will call it Afrobeat. Mm -hmm. And then the musicians will say Afrobeats, you know. Um, and I personally think that most of them, these things are nomenclature. Right. Okay. Um, they basically will mean the same thing, okay. uh, because in in the in the traditional Af uh, African society, music and dance bear the same name. Mm. So adwa adwa dance, mm. palogo palogo dance, mm. uh, kete music kete dance. Mm. In the same way, Afro pop music, Afro pop dance, Afro beats dance, Afro beats dance. Okay. Afrobeat music, sorry, Afrobeat music, Afrobeat dance, mm -hmm. you know, but they all basically mean the same thing. Others mm -hmm. are calling them urban Afro pop, uh, urban dance in Africa, uh, African dance, uh, contemporary African dance. They are saying a lot of things, using all kinds of terms for it. But um, yes, Afro pop dance and Afrobeat dance. Same. Okay. All right. So, um, <clears throat> so if I deduced from what you're saying, it means the youth are very instrumental to the growth of Afri Afro pop or Afro beats in, in, in Africa or even in yeah. diaspora, right? Yeah. And so uh, what, what would you say will be the um, socioeconomic significance of these dances to the different, you know, spaces, the different African okay. spaces that uh, we have? Okay. All right. So I think that the the new turn as far as um, technology is concerned has uh, made the should i say that has deepened the democracy mm -hmm. of popular music performance okay, okay? um originally uh, this democratic performance was within a particular space called the dance, dance cipher mm -hmm. right so they would dance, the dance sci-fi is amongst groups of persons in various locations. Mm. And therefore people did not have the wherewithal to access these dances. For instance, if you are in the UK and you are doing a dance sci-fi in Accra, mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't know about it and you don't know mm. what's happening yeah. until the camera comes to pick it and mm -hmm. drops it in the US or in the UK, then you can have access to it, mm -hmm. all right? Now, and therefore a lot of these dances were being done for free. Mm. around that time, mm -hmm. okay? They were being done for free. Aside from that, if there's any socioeconomic importance of these dances, even though they were doing it for free, okay, mm -hmm. for the musicians, mm -hmm. they were cashing in because these dancers were making their music um, um, genres popular, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right? And, yeah. and because the packaging of music is one of the easiest among the performing arts, mm -hmm. okay? Um, they were actually cashing in mm -hmm. on, the, on, on these uh, dance performances. Mm -hmm. um, and then also the individuals who became popular among the dancers, 
-hmm. also had um, call-ups performances. And so they'll be invited to go and perform at certain places and they will be paid and all that. Mm -hmm. These were all dynamics in the socioeconomic um, um, milieu around the times of these pop dances. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, you, you know, during, for instance, during our time when we were very young, mm -hmm. it was the dance competitions that um, patronized, people patronized all these pop dances. So we'll be invited uh, to to go and participate in dance competitions and people pay to come and watch. And therefore we get paid, you know, yeah. from participating or if you win a cash prize, that changes your life, you know? And for me, uh, as an individual, it, it more or less changed my life when yeah. I won the national dance competition and was right. given a prize, television, video deck, plane oh. tickets to go to the U UK. That time. And so the dynamics <laughs> at that time, yeah. yes, around that time. Yeah. So it, the dynamics around that time was different. Mm -hmm. But for now, the social media platforms have, has opened the doors to these young um, pop dance performers, you know, mm -hmm. and they are getting contacts mm -hmm. because musicians are now able to locate them. You know, quite recently, uh, uh, Beyonce made Dance God Lloyd perform yeah. in, in, in a video, yeah. all right? And it is through the social media platform. So globalization, which is the bringing together into one global village of mm -hmm. all the, the smaller nations, mm -hmm. together with the bigger nations into one smaller village has actually given us the opportunity, you know, to shine wherever you are as a musician mm -hmm. or as a yeah. dancer. All right, so these dancers, the democracy has been deepened. Everybody now has a voice. Just mm -hmm. pick your camera, record yourself dancing, put it on social media and you are there. Your voices are there. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are, are getting contracts to go to Dubai, to go and do pop dance classes, Afro pop dance classes, mm -hmm. uh, to go to Abu Dhabi and, and mm -hmm. across the world, UK, Germany, France. You know, some of these young dancers are getting gigs all around the place. People are contacting mm -hmm. them from abroad and flying down to come and have classes with them. You know, as mm -hmm. I'm speaking now, for the first time, you know, there is a pop dance um, uh, class that is being organized by several of the pop dancers who are now making it. <laughs> dance God Lloyd uh, has his own place, DW Academy, you know, and I know Ziggy has something like that. Yeah. And until recently, I know, <clears throat> um, uh, uh, what's his name? One of these popular dancers also has mm -hmm. opened his uh, dance studio. Okay. Um, and they are teaching Afro pop dance. Mm. So the, the, the socioeconomic aspect of these dances, very, very, very impactful, you know, on the youth. Mm. You know, a lot of them are now making ends meet. Some of them are riding in cars, you know, mm. and, and stuff like that. And some of them have their own businesses set up, you know, doing things on their own. And so it is changing uh, the dynamics of the okay. dance realm. And I think that the sky is the limit. Um, okay. A lot of All things right. are going to come out of it. Mm. Okay, good. Yeah, good. So, so within the creation of some of these dances, what are some of the elements that actually comes into play um, for the creation of the Afro pop or Afro Afro beats or whatever term people okay. may call it? Yeah. Okay. So I, <clears throat> yes, and this is this is what makes me sad sometimes when people ask me some of these questions because almost all these questions I have captured in my thesis, my mm. PhD thesis. Okay. All right. So I was trying to relate, correlate uh, the pop dance mm -hmm. and the sociopolitical um, dispensations yes. across time. All right. So in my research, I was trying to link what happened sociopolitically in one particular era mm -hmm. and the pop dances that they produced, mm -hmm. the young ones produced. So, and I realized that Almost all these dances are influenced by the what goes on sociopolitically. Mm -hmm. You can say culturally, okay? But mm -hmm. sociopolitically, what goes on in a particular period, mm -hmm. the, the information that keeps coming out with these young ones, hearing them, the constant hearing mm -hmm. of, of armed robbery, okay? armed robbery cases and their 
there have been armed robbery cases here and somebody died. And there have been an armed robber, robbery, robbery case here and, and constantly feeds into the psyche of these young ones. All right. And then you will find out that eventually they will create a dance about that particular situation in that era. Mm -hmm. So you see the pay dance, yeah? The dance that they yeah. jump and pay. Mm -hmm. When you investigate, you will realize that it was around the time that consistently Ghana was encountering armed robberies. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were young ones, some were students, you know, a group of students who, are, who think that they need to get some cash immediately. Mm -hmm. You don't know how they get access to guns and then they go armed robbery. Mm -hmm. You know, so it is what pertains within the sociopolitical era. So, and I argue in my piece is that the dance called Anwa. Ghanaians created a dance called Anwa, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like Anwa. you are on a, yes, you are on a slippery floor. You mm -hmm. understand? So you mm -hmm. keep twisting the legs in opposite direction. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And that particular dance style, you know, mm -hmm. Anwa is oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah? yeah, Angwa is oil. So yeah, when you pour be. oil on the floor, mm -hmm. yeah, and you are walking on oil on the floor, mm -hmm. it's slippery. There's that slippage. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So it is that which informed them to create that and give it okay. that name because of the okay. slippage. All right. Mm -hmm. Now you realize the way that the, the swing the body and the arm, the legs, mm -hmm. keep changing direction. All mm -hmm. right. Your leg goes this way and that way, this way and that way. Mm -hmm. That is the political situation. Oh. NDC, MPP, NDC, MPP, NDC. <laughs> and so when the people became politically conscious, mm -hmm. all right, in coming out with an expression, mm -hmm. because dance is so loaded mm -hmm. that if you cannot express what you, your thoughts, mm -hmm. in, in articulate your thoughts verbally, yeah. you know, you enca encapsulate it in movement. Yeah. Okay. And release it. And mm -hmm. it is heavy. And this All is right. done subconsciously. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it is not like that you go and sit down and plan and say that, oh, and because of the political situation, and let's, no, let's no. Yeah. Yes. Right. It is, it is in it mm -hmm. something that takes place and it is crystallized mm -hmm. in a way into what we call the movement. And it will take the, um, um, researcher that effort to do this correlation between mm -hmm. the political social political system and mm -hmm. uh, because i remember i came back to ghana in 20 no uh, 1999 2020 uh, 2000 mm -hmm. the year 2000 yeah 1999 to 2000 about like 10 days to 2000 yeah all right mm -hmm. and i recall and i've always argued that since that particular day that I entered Ghana. Mm. I have listened constantly every single day. And I'm not, and I'm not exaggerating. Mm -hmm. Every single day, argument about politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. NDC, yeah. MPP, NDC, right. MPP, Yeah, so we are still on with the discussion on Afro, Afro pop, Afro African popular dance, and uh, our host, Mr. Terry Bright of Fosu, is um, uh, actually giving us some insights. And then they regurgitate right. it. All right. You know, so it is something that the youth take in, mm -hmm. okay, over a period, digest yeah. it, and then they regurgitate it. Mm -hmm and comes out in the form of a dance, mm. which is what they call the pop dance. All right, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, internet issues, it keeps going out and in. And um, uh, yes, yeah, so I was saying that Uncle Terry is uh, giving us some information on <clears throat> how a I mean, elements that comes into play when we talk about African popular dances. And um, can you hear us? Uncle? Are you back? Yeah, we're back. Yes. Are you All back? Right. Good. Yes. Good. So I was going to talk about uh, 
the the dance that I discovered. Mm -hmm. Very very interesting mm -hmm. dance. When I was there, uh, our pop dance was at its peak yeah. in the around the 1982 83 mm -hmm. um, thereabout. There was a dance called Mezop. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Rollins had done his coup. Mm. Okay. And so we're, we're under military rule. Mm -hmm. And we were supposed to sleep at six o'clock. Six. Right. Okay. Six p.m. Everybody must go to bed. Mm -hmm. If you are in somebody's house, you must sleep there. You don't move. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, right. it was it was a serious thing. You'll be shot mm. on sight. Whoa. All right. Yes. Mm. Apprehended if you attempt running, you'll be shot on sight. Okay. Mm -hmm. So nobody was supposed to be moving. Mm. But yet still, we were still doing our dances, our um open air, you know, jamborees. Mm -hmm. And so we'll go in there, start at 12 o'clock, hot sun, we'll be dancing, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. When it's about five o'clock, we close. Okay. And then everybody has to go home, run home, you know. <laughs> so you find yourself five, six miles away, you have to run home, run okay? Away. yeah. But we developed a dance we call Mess Up. Mm -hmm. Mess Up. Hmm. Now, at the time, the term Mess Up, we called it Mess Up, Mess Up, Mess Up, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. But the term was actually Messed Up. Everything was Messed Up. Messed up. All right. Now, this was against the background that we had come, there was a, a champon coup, mm -hmm. A coup uh, 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 no, in fact, it was a, a champon coup in 72, mm -hmm. and then a champon transition, then a coup mm -hmm. and then rolling school. So we had incessant coup d'etats. Yeah. Okay. And so the system was messed up. And it was military coup, military coup, military coup. Military. So it was military yeah. personnel who were ruling the country. Mm -hmm. And so the youth, having looked at it and thought about it and seen it and got it and and then digested it, came up with a dance called Mesa, mm. which was a statement saying that the political system was messed up. Mm. The social system was messed up. We were queuing for milk. We were queuing for sugar. Wow. We were queuing for milo. Bread, bread, we were queuing for it. Yeah. You understand? The system mm. was actually messed up. And so they mm. created a dance called Mesa. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is what actually fascinated me. Mm. When you enter the the dance hall where there was a jamboree. You know, mm -hmm. remember, there's, a, there's supposed to be a curfew, all yeah. right? Mm -hmm. At six o'clock, yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you enter the jamboree hall and you mm -hmm. watch the dancers performing, yeah. everybody is down low, like they are stooping. The mezop was like that. Mm -hmm. You have to go down low, both knees bent, okay? And mm -hmm. then you do your dance. And they have done their hands was like that, like the person is holding a gun. Oh yeah. Okay, so it's the constant scene of soldiers carrying guns, mm -hmm. telling you that you have to sleep at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. All right, and therefore you must be always dodging. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you are on your way and curfew strikes, mm -hmm. you have to keep dodging until you get home. Mm. So you have to stoop low every time running from one hedge to another mm. until you get home. So that particular sociopolitical situation mm. informed the creation of the pop dance called Mezap. Okay. Which when you enter the jungle hall, you see everybody's down low like that, mm. moving. Oh, Mezap. Oh, Mezap. Oh, Mezap. Okay. You understand? Can you hear me, brother? Yes. Okay, good. Oh. So the, 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 the sociopolitical situation actually influences the creation of the of, of pop dances okay okay mm -hmm. it, it is not that alone but i think that a chunk of it mm. okay there are other aspects of social life that mm -hmm. influences pop dance right. you understand mm -hmm. yes yes okay. i hope i've answered your question yes no, of course of course all right so i mean looking at how the dance creation um uh i mean elements comes into play with afro pop would you say that there is some line between that the creation of the uh, Afro pop and the creation of traditional dances? Yes, 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 what, yes. What, what yes. would you see? I mean, is there any line between the two? Yes, a lot. 
Mm-hmm. There's a lot between. You see, because the the the, the, the traditional dances mm-hmm. are embodied. Yeah. For us, we've seen them over and over on television. Even if you have not performed it before, mm-hmm. okay, you have seen them on TV. You have seen the people performing it over and over, and, and so we embody them. Yeah. So it becomes part of our expression. Mm-hmm. All right. So what we do actually is when we get information of the social political system, mm-hmm. and we want to create a new dance. Yeah. This embodied movement helps to develop new ones. Mm-hmm. So you will realize that you, you want to create um, Azonto, mm-hmm. all right? You are mm-hmm. creating Azonto. You've not thought about it, but mm-hmm. out of probably serendipity, this dance will come out, mm-hmm. what they call anthems, mm-hmm. okay? The dance will come out. Yeah. But the embodied aspect, which is the, the, the traditional dances that you have in your body, mm-hmm would also be mixing with what you are creating, mm. right? Okay. And therefore you see that there's a, a link. And I, I, I linked that to in my thesis. I wrote about mm-hmm. that too. Mm-hmm. That for instance, when you take Azonto, yeah. all right? Yeah. Which was created amongst the Gans, mm-hmm. right? The Ga people of greater Accra region. Yeah. I argued that most of the pop dances mm-hmm. actually start from the greater Accra region where the Gans mm-hmm. are, okay? because mm-hmm. it's a city. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a hub of the uh, social media. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. So most of it, television stations and all that, were actually started in mm-hmm. the Greater Accra region. Okay. Yeah. So mm-hmm. most of these dances, pop dances, actually start there. You find the nightclubs, bars, and all that there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the creation of Azonto, you realize when you analyze it and you break it down deeper, you realize that there are elements of Panlogo dance mm-hmm. in there, yeah. okay? Yeah. Malogo is based on, uh, um, is a pop dance that was developed late 1950s, early 60s, all right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it was based on the fusion between mm-hmm. rock and roll, mm. rock and roll, yeah. and Af- uh, uh, Ghanaian traditional dances, all right? Okay. Dance movements, okay? Mm-hmm. Like uh, some like the Kolo machine, the Gumes, and all that, all right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the mixture, all right. Mm-hmm. So, rock and roll has twists in there. You know, mm-hmm. at that time yeah. there was a dance called twist. Mm-hmm. So the twist, which yeah. influenced the Palogo, mm-hmm. all right. Go yeah. and check the Azonto okay. dance. All right, all right. You see the yeah. twist in Azonto? Yeah, twist and yes. Turn. So it is the Palogo, huh? It is the Palogo mm-hmm. twist, which has been embodied by the youth that is coming through exactly. All right. Okay, which is coming okay. through the uh, Azonto dance, mm-hmm. and I can mention that with several of the of, of the dances, mm-hmm. and I think over time, the uh, Accra is becoming a bit more cosmopolitan. Mm-hmm. All right, and a lot of Evers are in Accra, mm-hmm. a lot of uh, Akans, Akans are in Accra. Agumbes. You know, and so you go to uh, you go to Accra proper now. Mm-hmm. You know, among the Bukum, you see mm-hmm. them, yeah. three people speaking three. Mm-hmm. You know, all around the place, mm-hmm. you see others there and all that. Mm-hmm. So the cosmopolitan nature is making our traditional dances even spread the more. Mm. Okay. So when you look at um, the wheelbarrow dance, yeah, I, I know, I know, Benedictus is here, oh, so yeah. he knows when the, <laughs> you know the wheelbarrow dance. Mm-hmm. You realize that they they step out with the right leg and come back mm-hmm. to position, step out to the left leg and come mm-hmm. out come back to their original position, all right? Mm. So you step, open second position, come back to mm. first position with the right leg, second position, left leg, come back first position, all right? Mm. And then they do something like that, like they, they simulate right. the pushing of a wheelbarrow, yeah? Mm-hmm. Or a yeah. truck, yeah? Mm-hmm. Now, that movement is a movement that you find in the other Abaja dance, mm. that they step out and in, out okay. and in. Okay. Out and in, you understand. You mm-hmm. will find it in the Talogo dance too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Welcome, Mustafa. You will find <laughs> it. You will find it in the. Um, uh, you will find it in the Talogo dance as well. Mm-hmm. You understand. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. 
yes, we, yeah, you know, internet issues, sometimes it can be a little bit funny. Uh, but we're trying to find a correlation between uh, Afropop dance yes, and, because... yeah, okay, you're back. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of the, a lot of the um, pop dances that you see have mm -hmm. their bases in the traditional dances because mm -hmm. the, youth, the youth embody them, you know, um, and a lot of them embody them and it is uh, subconsciously they embody the dances because they've seen it, they've watched people perform it over and over, they've assimilated it, you know, mm -hmm. and so in their process of creation, they actually rely mm -hmm. on the traditional dances mm -hmm. subconsciously, you know, as a resource, you know, to and build on it. So we call that resignification okay. of um, our tradition. Um, oh. And then they, they use that as. Sorry about that. Um, oh. the, the, yeah, can you hear me, Anktay? Hello, are you back? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, all right, great. Yeah. Great. Okay, so, um, all right, great. So with all these, how would you say uh, dance contributes to the development of a society, a country, Africa as a whole? And of course, as we go along, um, people on the, on, the, all right. on, on the channel so, can um, also contribute their questions. I mean, you can note them down. I'm gonna be asking Uncle Terry as we move along. Thank you, yeah, sorry. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll say that um, that's, a, that's a very broad question, mm -hmm. um, dance and, and development, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm here, I don't know whether you are referring to pop dance or dance yeah, in okay. general. Yeah, know? so we'll, we'll, we'll um, concentrate if on- If it's dance on in general, I can dance. answer. Yeah, we'll, we'll concentrate on popular dance and of course, okay, if good. you want to extend to good. dance in general, that would be okay. All right, so, hello? Yes. I can hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Yeah. All right. So, um, pop dance and its contribution to the nation. You know that pop dance exists in tandem with its musical type. Mm -hmm. All right? tandem with this musical type. So mm -hmm. when you talk about pop dance, about also talking about we know what Asha has done in the US. Mm -hmm. We know what um, um, uh, all these top, top rap musicians have done mm -hmm. in the US. Yeah. We know what Kwakesi has done in Ghana. We know what Shatawale has done in Ghana. We know what Easy and um, Kwame UJ mm -hmm. and um, all these big Amachi Dedes, mm -hmm. Daddy Lumbers, mm -hmm. of them, all of them actually advertise Trying to actually did it. Okay. It's a typical high life person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. How much did it is a typical high life person. Mm -hmm. High life is popular music. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we Ghanaians treat it as if it is a is a traditional high life is a popular music and dance. That was the first. Um, um, Western influenced pop music mm -hmm. of Ghana. Highlight. All right. Um, yeah. Yep. So, still so trying to connect uh, stuff, internet issues. Uh, uh, but we're trying to find a link. Um, uh, how popular dance or yeah african popular dance you know influence development in the various communities and uh, uncle terry is giving us some 
uh, insights on that. Uh, hopefully, oh, the internet went off. Anyway, so uh, hi everybody here. Uh, okay, Uncle Terry is back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, you yes, were... I'm back. Can you hear me, brother? Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, you you were you were you were on the uh, how Afropop, you know, um, influenced the development of of, of societies of a country. Yeah. And we were talking about Amachi the day and yes. the, the rest and their contributions yes. to that. Yeah. Yeah. And, high... and I was arguing that. Mm -hmm. And I was arguing that even though Amachi the day is a highlight position. Mm -hmm. and, and Ghanaian street high life has said it is a traditional sort of thing. It is not. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is the Western influenced type of pop uh, dance and music type. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was the first Western influence recorded mm -hmm. in history. Okay. Mm -hmm. Western influence resulted in the creation of. Um, highlights okay what we have today mm -hmm. and it goes all the way back to the 1920s mm. when it was a uh, 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 Saba, and then they created what they call the adaha and then from the adaha they move on to the kakegu bands creating our orchestra bands also coming up with their type of highlight. these were serious influences from the 1920s mm -hmm. Now the highlight music, they call it that they, they have what we call the Yamponsa beat. You, mm -hmm. Are you aware of that? They call they call it the Yamponsa beat. Oh yeah. You mm -hmm. you, you mm -hmm. get that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did it when we when uh, undergrad. Uh, Hello. The Yamponsa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with, okay. Um, and they call the it the Yamponsa. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you know why they call it the Yamponsa? No. Do you know why they call it the Yamponsa? No. Okay, so Yaponsa is a pop dancer. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yes, yes, specialized in the dancing of high life. Oh. Aha. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and so if anything at all, by this time they should be giving uh, Yaponsa her family some royalties. They be royalties. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was one of the best pop dances mm. and took her life to another level. Mm. And so because of her popularity and everything, they used her name in the music. Mm. Okay. So, and then yeah. eventually called the high life rhythm, the yap on some beat. Mm. Okay. So okay. pop dance has influenced us over a long period. Mm. Okay, so um, I mean, just staying on the on the topic on royalties. So unfortunately, this line is a bit. Yeah, can you hear me? MTN, MTN, MTN. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Peter Ross. Hello? Rather, I'll say something. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I was saying that staying on the topic on royalties, I'm, 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 can you hear me? Yeah, I can okay. hear you. Okay. Uh, so um, how does it work in the dance space? I know, of course, uh, of course, I've been listening to uh, uh, um, conversations on United Show Biz yesterday. You know, that whole conversation came in with um, how musicians are, uh compensated for their works and all that how how does that play with yeah. the dance with, with dance uh whether afro pop or any like young Ponsa as you raised for instance has there been any you know investigation into some of these things and you know people compensated for what they do for example we are talking about uh, dance god lloyd we're talking about the incredible ziggies and the rest now if as they grow for their works that they have contributed to the entertainment space in Ghana, are there going to be any form of royalties for these people? Is is there any conversation on uh, around these um, um, topics? Yeah, if you, if you, if you want to talk about uh, 
it in relation to Ghana. Mm -hmm. Even in Ghana, musicians are, uh, I was listening to um, this gospel musician who got the artist of the year. Um, um, oh, this is that, that lady. Yeah. The name is gone. But, yeah. yes, Hamilton. but she was, Dinah Hamilton. Dinah Hamilton. Hamilton. Hamilton, yeah. Dinah Hamilton, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can of, hear you. Okay. So Diana Hamilton was complaining that mm. she is able to get her, and that's a musician, mm -hmm. not even a dancer. Mm -hmm. She was complaining that she's able to get her royalties mm -hmm. from the West. Mm. Every royalty. Mm. She takes it from the West, but not in Ghana. And that the authorities must do something about it and mm. work out ways to actually um, get them to get their royalties, mm. you know, in Ghana, because uh, it is not organized properly mm. as far as she's concerned. Okay. So you can, you can uh, understand the fact that if musicians who are well organized with an association, mm. okay, a very formidable association mm. are complaining that they don't get their royalties, how much more dances? <laughs> okay. At the moment, we are struggling to, we were trying to come up with a dance federation. Uh -huh. And I hope to, you know, I was I was depending on something. And I think it's about time. Everybody has complained that, you know, we should have um, finished it and launched it and, and, and moved on, you know. Okay. But it's a dance federation that would attempt, because we have a lot of scholars in there mm -hmm. and uh, some dancers on the ground, you know, mm -hmm. and some dance connoisseurs who would have, we, we actually engrafted, we wouldn't have, we actually engrafted them. Mm -hmm. uh, people like Ajete Suwa and all that. And we're now going to look at the young ones too and put them in together to be part of the Federation so mm -hmm. that every association, dance association in the country can mm -hmm. connect to it, you know? Then mm -hmm. we can actually have a proper front, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because of the, the presence of some scholars and some um, well-known people in the dance industry. We can have a very strong, solid front and then we can now begin to work on it. But that issue too is a very complicated one because I, I remember I was having a discussion with the uh, professor, the late professor Niyati, may his soul mm -hmm. rest in peace. Yeah. And we were talking about this uh, issue of royalty that, uh, and he was more concerned about his choreographies and mm -hmm. some movements that he introduced. Mm. that he thinks that, you know, people have been picking his mm. movement, especially mm. the Noyam mm -hmm. approach, Noyam style. you know, yeah. um, but what he claims to be Noyamic, mm -hmm. you understand? Um, that people are um, actually um, stealing his movement and mm -hmm. using it to, and, and that they, they, they needed to pay royalties, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, we went to do a, some small argument. Mm. And I was saying that uh, for movement, it is very, um, it is very difficult mm. to, to say that a particular movement belongs to you, mm -hmm. you know, um, in dance, because mm. um, uh, there are only a set amount of limited movements that we can boast of because our body has limits. Mm -hmm. You understand? I mm -hmm. can't bend my this hand down like that. Exactly. Okay, it has a limit. You mm -hmm. understand? So I can only operate within that, that space. Mm -hmm. And there are millions and millions and billions of people on this earth. Mm -hmm. So if everybody is supposed to produce one movement, if you don't take a exhaust movement, mm. and there will still be people enough who would have to deal with their body again and then so that they can, you, you don't want to, you get the mm -hmm. argument. Mm -hmm. So in, with movement, it's a bit difficult to pin it down. Mm -hmm. But I think that what we, we, we we can do and argue about it's is about dance styles. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, uh, how um, um, Ziggy introduced mm -hmm. the Pilolo movement. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, Pilolo movement one, two, three, and ten. And right? turn, yeah, yeah, Pilolo movement, mm -hmm. and how. You, you can look at it as a, a, a mini dance phrase, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. okay? A mini dance freeze. And, and therefore you can say that it belongs to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's again, it's just one movement style mm. or, or if, 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 the the network is, if, if there's a problem, Angatari, you can mute, you can stop your video. It will be smoother if you stop your video. Oh, okay. Advise him to stop his video and it will be smoother for him. Is it my network? Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, I think Mustafa was advising. Is it, is it my network? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to tell you if you can stop Hello? your video, just stop the video and use the audio so you can speak, we can hear you. Hello? The video. Yeah. Yankatari, yeah, can Actually, you hear me? You want me to stop my video? Yeah, I think uh, when the video stops, uh, the audio it, it gets be better. Yeah. Yes. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you now. Hello? Can you hear can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, yeah can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. It should be yeah. fine now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's very, it's very difficult. If you are discussing dance and people cannot see you because sometimes like, yeah, you have to yeah. demonstrate the movement. Do, yeah, do some demonstrations. Other than that, um, if I have to break down the movement in words, it will uh, yeah. be like uh, three pages <laughs> for one word. For one movement. Yeah. Anyway. Um, okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. okay. So let me go on. Yeah. yeah. So. Hello? Hello? Um, what do you call it? Uh, yeah. You're mess right. up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even when you look at the pillow dance yeah. that Ziggy created, it mm -hmm. is based on mess up, mm. which was a dance that came in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So it, it is a it's a very complicated issue that we need to find ways of solving. Um, the, either there should be a cap, mm -hmm. okay, on mm -hmm. it, and say that if you create a five minutes dance or two minutes dance, mm -hmm. or you create a dance that you can register mm. without any issues, because if if uh, Ziggy wants to register um, pillow load dance, yeah. those of us in the 80s who participated in a mezzop dance mm -hmm. will also come and say that, you know, you cannot do it because you cannot do it because um, it was done in the mm -hmm. 80s and you have to pay as royalties. Yeah. So it's a very complicated issue. Mm -hmm. And I think that we need to sit down as dance practitioners Mm -hmm. to figure out ways of uh, coming up. I don't know whether that has been done in the US and the UK mm -hmm. or the Western world, but I know that once you do a, a choreographic piece, it becomes yours, it's registered. Mm -hmm. You know, that choreography is, is, is yours and nobody mm -hmm. can and replicate it or duplicate it without your, your prior your attention. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah. um, because I think, yeah, there's going to be a lot of um, perhaps sampling and all that because exactly more, exactly more like yeah more like in, in in the music industry where somebody can sample somebody's you know uh, tune or even work exactly. and all that and then yeah. you also have to you know give reverence to that particular person uh moving forward that's right yeah so um yeah so uh i, I think i think we'll go with our last question and then um we'll, we'll i think i think uh, benedictus benedictus has his hand up oh is, is it or benedictus? we should finish first Yes. Would, yeah. Yeah. If we finish, then uh, oh. um, yeah, everybody can uh, bring in their questions, and then we can. Okay. Uh, oh, that's that's me. That's me. That's not Benedictus. That's. Ah, so why is it, why is it ODK? 
ODG, yes, I'm a founding member, a proud member. <laughs> I, I was going right. to say, I'm going to tell you, I was going yeah. to say that. All right, go ahead. I know okay. an institution, I can't mention their name, but what they are doing is they are using artificial intelligence to copyright some of these movements that you're talking about. So in the mm. near future, they will be copywriting dance movements. So you do a movement, they get it. I don't know how they are doing it, but I have talked to, I've met some of them at a conference and they've talked and they've strategized how they are going to do this. And so the project is in the pipeline. Mm. I don't know when they are going to launch it, but it will take, and they, 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 they themselves accepted that it will take a long time and a lot of work, but mm -hmm. just to put it out there, it it has been start. It it's it it it's in the pipeline. It's in the process. It, yeah. it is happening. Yes. Mm -hmm. So All right. okay. All right. All okay. right. Let's see where right. it goes. Um, I'm just hoping that it's not going to be Western bias. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. So um, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, building on the Anyways. same. Building on the same thing, we've, I know that you've, you've, you've spoken about some of the uh, benefits of, you know, current popular dances to uh, the youth. And, and you also mentioned that, of course, now some of them have, you know, of course, cars, they're able to, you know, take care of their own expenses, uh, probably uh, which, might, which were not there previously. And so this pop dance is actually, you know, giving people um a, a lot of economic gains uh but apart from that is there any other uh exposure that is bringing the youth to uh is is there any um as it were for developmental purposes um in, in terms of education yeah. in terms of um research is there maybe hope for Afro, Afro pop in that space? Yes, I'll say a yes and a no. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'll say a yes and a no. Um, no, because the, the, the nation itself. And you mean Ghana? Yes, mm -hmm. has not um, taken a very good look at dance and its prospects. Mm -hmm. We only, and, and, it, and it is evidenced in the, the, the behavior of parents whose children want to come to the School of Performing Arts. And we have talked about this thing over and over and over. Mm -hmm. so that particular attitude towards dance mm -hmm. is a national thing, mm -hmm. okay? And it starts from government all the way through parents to the last person in the society. All right, mm. that they don't view dance as any lucrative or any uh, career worthy of pursuit. Mm. So, um, it, 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 because of that, they 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 don't find it necessary to um, mount some projects that, that will educate these young ones, and mm. they want to see. A production mm -hmm. oh we need to support dance and uh, but it is not from the heart mm. yeah just like a word of mouth <laughs> hello All right, so we still discuss and own money. Yeah, okay. yep. with his own salary. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you go back to that to that salary thing? Because I think you went off a little bit. Rasa, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying that mm -hmm. privately, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. This dance concert called Robert Clark, mm -hmm. okay who is into salsa dance and all that, but organizes dance, national dance festival, okay? Every year mm -hmm. with his own money. And he covers, he covers traditional, he covers Afro pop, every area. Mm -hmm. 
now he's trying what you call dance sports, mm. okay, which is going to be a big thing because they will take it to the Olympics, mm. okay. The one who wins will take, will take it to the Olympics, mm. and so he's, he's trying to prepare this tackle. And why? Because he thinks that was, and he's the federation that we're trying to form, okay. Mm-hmm. But he thinks that was, we are too slow, okay. So he does things his way. So he uses wages and everything to mm-hmm. organize these festivals. And mm-hmm. then one, he organized, I think this year, mm-hmm. I think at the beginning of the year or so. Yeah. I was there. And he had organized, because I, I think I spoke about as, um, being able to get some form of insurance Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, hopefully Uncle Terry will connect back. Um hello. Something that they will pay monthly, and then mm-hmm. at the end when they go on retirement, they can go and collect some money mm-hmm. to feed on mm-hmm. when they are old. So yeah. I was advising. So I think he, he organized a, 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 a workshop during the mm-hmm. dance festival okay. and invited all the pop dancers, the street dancers and everybody. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. And he invited resource persons to come and speak. And I thought that was fantastic. Mm-hmm. You understand? He invited resource persons who came to speak and talk about, you know, their future and how, what they, how they have to behave and how they have to deal with the issue of... Um, 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 uh, royalties, mm. you know, because there should be a way. If mm. you cannot, um, um, and I found that very, very important, that if you cannot register yourself as a dancer and be able to get royalties for your works done, mm-hmm. okay? And when you take any musician music and perform with the music and you put it It's essential mm-hmm. that you turn yourself into a dancer musician. Mm. Like, um, can, can, can you, can like Slim Buster, back, like Mike Jackson. Yeah, can you, can you go back on that a little bit? Because I think you were cutting out, so we couldn't actually link uh, the narrative well. Okay. So I was saying mm-hmm. that in his program, yeah. it, Um, yeah, so, um, hello, Uncle Terry. Okay, so, um, you, I mean, if you're here and you can hear me, you can, you can uh, get your questions ready. We'll just jump into uh, the Q&A right away, right after his submission, and then... Um, hello, brother. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, yeah, I, I think, yeah, you went off, like, 30 seconds already. <laughs> so, oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, I think it's almost the same. So if you want to put your video on, that would be fine. Because uh, it looks as if, um, yeah, we, we'll just manage. And <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah so Mustafa, your advice. <laughs> advice, and Kusiaga. OK. Anyway, yeah. So, yes, yeah. So uh, going back to, to, to the person who you're talking, uh, what's the name of the person? Because uh, we couldn't- Robert Kla. OK. The name is Robert Kla. Okay. Mm. A former student of the University of Ghana, they gone. I okay. think he passed through the school of performance. I think he did some theater or something. Mm. Then and then went. You okay. Know. Okay. So, in his uh, workshop that he organized for these pop dancers, mm-hmm. in fact, it was for dancers in general. Mm. You know, he was he invited resource persons mm-hmm. to come and talk to them about branding, mm-hmm. about life insurance, mm-hmm. and what have you, how to set up a business mm. and all that. Okay, and I thought I thought it was a very loud of one. Okay, mm. but what actually touched me is about the fact that they advise the dancers mm. to be able to save something towards the end of their career. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So some kind of pension scheme mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that you can pay monthly. 
you know. And I thought that because I've been talking about this particular thing almost every time, mm. almost every time. You understand? So um, uh, privately, I think that there are individuals who have been talking to. In fact, I had a, a meeting with uh, Dance God Lloyd and Afro Beast mm -hmm. um, sometime last year, mm -hmm. getting to the end of last year um, at um, a crumble, mm -hmm. you know, and I advised them on that particular issue, mm. okay, on that particular issue of pension and life insurance and all those mm. things. Yeah. And I, of course, I think that it is very important for us as dancers. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, but, the body, but, the, but, yeah, go ahead. But one very important advice mm -hmm. that I have been telling people, in fact, we went to a conference in Nigeria and I, I, I advised the dancers on that. Mm -hmm. uh, a conference organized by Kafi, the world record who died, the longest dance or something. She said oh. she's a Nigerian. She's called Kathy. Okay. You can Google her and see. Okay. Yeah. And we went. Is it K A F I? Uh, I think yes. I think it's K A F F E or something. Okay. I'm not very good at that. He's a dancer. She's a dancer. Okay. Kathy. So I told the dancers that listen, they if you put your videos, you dance with anybody's music, and you put it on social media. And that you don't own the music. Some platforms will pull it down. And I learned mm -hmm. YouTube does that or something. Mm -hmm. I'm not very sure. Mm -hmm. I don't normally do that. So mm -hmm. um, they pull it down. All right. So mm -hmm. as musicians, in order to be able to succeed, mm -hmm. you know, create your own music like Slim Buster did, like Michael Jackson did. Some of them, they didn't have a clue about music. But today, mm -hmm. they are musicians. Okay. Mm -hmm. Create your own music, create your own beats, all that, dance with it, put it there. Gradually, you build. Mm -hmm. And one of the advisors who came, came advising that, oh, they should do collaborations with musicians. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that, yes, it is good. But the yeah. best is to do your own music. Mm -hmm. Because even musicians who are groups, they fight. Yeah. They fight exactly. and they break up. So if you are doing a, a collab with a musician, you will mm -hmm. fight and break up because sometimes they will, they will think that they have to own the lion share. Mm -hmm. And you, the dancer, you know, should be given some a token, you know? Yeah. And, and, and so and of course that, that would depend on the agreement prior to the project. Uh, yes, yes. And it I would depend on now, agreement. But you know that yeah, I know that now uh, some of the you know dancers have management and all that. So I think if they have a, a strong, a strong case to influence uh, how viral the, the the music can go, then they can actually, you know, come to some better terms. So what do you think? Yes, yes, I, I, yes. I think it, it 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 may work, but you know, Ghana, the Fama Nyami, Fama Nyami thing <laughs> is not making. No, yeah. yes, uh, uh, is Valerie there? Yeah, Miss Valerie is here. Miss is Valerie? Yeah, um, she's here. Huh? Yeah, she's okay. Here. So uh, Miss Valerie, uh, Fama Nyami. Famanyami simply means um, let's let's leave it to God, yeah, <laughs> for God to solve the problem. And it is uh -huh. a syndrome um, yeah. of us as a people. Mm -hmm. And so it does not normally make um, contracts work mm -hmm. properly here. Mm -hmm. You understand? You mm -hmm. sign a contract with somebody and you know that this is the contract, mm -hmm. you know, and then the person flouts the rules, mm -hmm. you know, because of um, 2,000 cities or 3,000 cities, you want to go to court? Yeah. To, so that they, they, for my name, they jano, jano. Yeah. You know, they, leave just it. leave him alone. I mean, mm -hmm. leave it to God. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, so it doesn't make contract actually mm -hmm. work. But in the in the US and 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 places that you are talking about millions of cities, you can't. Um, find me. <laughs> you can't. Yes. 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 All right. Okay. So um, mm -hmm. finally, my, my final question would be: What would be your recommendation to government officials on dance? Maybe in Ghana, for instance. Uh, and maybe you can also conclude. I'm on Zoom, project. please. I'm on Zoom, over. Uh, yeah, so... so somebody interrupted me. Can you just uh, repeat <laughs> the question? Yeah, My so advice that, to... Um, what would, what um, would you be... What government... would you be... Yeah, to government officials on uh, making sure that the dance... I mean, of course, another look on the dance, you know, in, 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 in the Ghanaian, you know... Uh, space and also to for example for you for instance you have had um i mean various research 
on on dance forms and all that and you have you know the <clears throat> advantages you know the prospects of dance uh, what would you what, what what would be your advice to government officials on on dance in, in ghana for instance Yeah, um, the Ghanaian problem is the fact that it's very huge. Mm. It is very huge because okay. um, the yeah, person so, becomes... Okay, hello? All right, so we try. I was trying to ask Uncle Terry about uh, his advice to government officials on uh, very, very important. Okay. Immediately, Chita Sowa won the world dance competition. Did you get that? Yeah, you 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 went off. A Raza, bit. did so you get you, that? Yeah, you went off a little bit. So if you can, if you can start. But your volume I mean, has gone down very low. Oh, um, hello. Your volume is very low now. Let me see what I can check a few things here. Can you hear me now? But can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you, but it's very faint. Oh. Uh, all right. Hello? Okay. Okay, I think, um, yeah. Um, can you hear? Uh, yeah, can you I hear me? Mean, yeah, it's really, it's really, um, okay, so whilst, whilst you're waiting for, hello. Answer, yeah, can you hear me? Hi. Oh, okay. All right. I think it's it's better. It's it's better. Okay. Now. So, what, what I, was the last I, thing? I, I was I was actually I wanted to surprise you. Anyway, um, so we didn't hear the beginning of what you said, and then we heard just the conclusion. So we we couldn't actually you know link up everything. Okay. So I'm yeah. I, I was saying that Ghana has a very huge problem when it comes to dance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And um, we are not interested in anything that does not go across our border. Mm. So Adzonto became famous because the world were rushing for it. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Adzonto became popular because a, a, a Samajan will run to the touchline when he's caught mm -hmm. and begin to do moves. Yeah. These young dancers uh, moves. Mm -hmm. And so everybody became interested in it. Mm -hmm. That is the Ghanaian for you. Mm -hmm. We are not interested in taking something and nurturing it and mm -hmm. letting it go. Wow. No, no, no. It must go mm -hmm. to the world first. Mm -hmm. Then we'll run to it. Like Azuma mm -hmm. Nelson, mm -hmm. like uh, DK Poison, like mm -hmm. Ike Masuka Kwati, mm -hmm. like uh, um, uh, what? Ajete Sowa. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Ghanaians were, became interested in uh, um, pop dancing, mm -hmm. okay, or freestyle dancing because mm -hmm. Ajete Sowa went to the world and conquered the world. Mm -hmm. And it is a very sad story. Mm -hmm. You understand? that we don't want to you see cafe in nigeria mm -hmm. organized a program of rata mm -hmm. she is a dancer mm -hmm. dancer by profession and she eats dance she drinks dance mm -hmm. she organized a program a conference and mm -hmm. invited three of us playing fair paid for mm -hmm. myself robert clark and dance god lord Mm. to go to Nigeria, to her conference. And she invited people from the US, Germany, in fact, in Europe. Mm -hmm. Flight, paid for, to come for the conference. Mm. You know where we had a conference? In a huge dome, fully air-conditioned, wow. sponsored by Zenith Bank mm. and then Access Bank. Mm. That's a dancer. Wow. You can never get that in Ghana. There's no way. I am a dance gonna say I teach mm -hmm. at the University of Ghana. I have been mm -hmm. on different programs, judging, mm -hmm. doing this, 
uh, uh, been on air, talked about dance. I've danced, they've taken it on uh, uh, TV. I've been interviewed here and there. I cannot even organize it. Wow. Because the psyche of the Ghanaian is so damaged, especially about dance, mm. that it is very difficult unless we come together mm. and plan that, look, we want to do this and want to take this into this level. Mm-hmm. You know, and let the government know that we can do something with that. Mm. We watched, they sat down, watch Azonto came into, into uh, being, mm-hmm. they sat down, and then the thing fizzled out. Mm. And we are insisting that, no, let's maintain Azonto just like we maintain her life. Mm-hmm. You understand? Let's yeah. maintain it. Let's maintain that pressure. You know? No, mm. they are not interested. Mm. So it is. Um, it is a very sad story um, mm. that I can, well, what can I do? Well, we we can talk to government when we get into positions mm. that you can be able to, in fact, on a board or something, then you can mm. now begin to push that, look, mm. this thing is one thing that is sustaining the youth. Mm. You understand? We, they just need guidance, mm-hmm. right? Getting them into music and dance at the same time, creating a Ghanaian Afro kind of music or musical type that you use mm. drum beats and all that, create your own thing, mm. get in some words, do your dance to it, mm. you are good to go. Can you create a storyline with different kinds of music that you've created, mm. you know, and create your own group and, you know, things like that. We can advise them on that. And then the youth mm. can make the impact more mm. strongly. But government, in fact, I don't know how I can advise government than to just mm. go on there and every time speak my mind concerning mm. dance. Those who have mm. ears will listen. You know, those who have, um, um, in fact, the, the, the deputy minister, Marco Krikumanti, is a personal mm-hmm. friend. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah. I, I met him the other time and she got down from his car, gave me, a, a, no, in fact, I was, I was jogging. So mm. she, he stopped and I walked to him and then he gave me his card. That's, mm. I should call him sometimes. I tried calling him like last month. He didn't pick, you know, but um, yes, that that is what comes with it, the the mm-hmm. the, the job. Sometimes you get so busy. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yes, I think they are they are busily trying to work on the the musicians and then the film acts and all those things, mm-hmm. you know. And then the dance the department, dance. dance becomes an an addendum, <laughs> an attach to it, you know. Right. But I think we need to work and and, and then push mm-hmm. so that. Um, but the right. issue is that we need more representations mm-hmm. of dance persons mm. in Ghana, you know, okay. that people can point to and say that these are dancers who dance solely and mm. they, they have made it with dance. Mm. Then they become a point of reference for okay. parents. Okay. You get it? And yeah. then and, and, and others. Yeah. Whoa. I, I think I have a surprise <laughs> for you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I think I have to go off. <laughs> All right, let me let me let me see what I can bring it back. Um, yeah, I think something happened. Yes, that is him. That's our dance class. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm trying to get it back. Uh, I just wanted to surprise you with this whilst people are, you know, preparing their questions and then. Um, all right. Uncle Terry teaching his class right there. Um, I know, I know you've also also done some 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 works on uh, uh, Michael Jackson's. I mean, yeah, yeah, some, yeah, 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 yeah. With uh, Ajete Klu. Uh-huh, and then, uh-huh. and on I and think on. Mustafa too was part. Yeah. Or was he gone? Oh, I'm, here, I'm here. I'm here. I'm <laughs> here. Yes, I was there, Sam. Yeah, <laughs> I was there, Sam. All right. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think we have we have some of these ones. Hey, is that Shanton? Shanton is also there, yes, Shanton. <laughs> All right, and so this 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 are some of the works of uh, Terry Wright for two. Um, yeah, that's what I was there. Uh, interesting. Yeah. So we just wanted to give you a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that day they were asking me to give uh, put on the lights so that, but I said no, it will kill the illusion I wanted to create. Yeah. So the videos are all like that. Santon, 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 Santon. You know, you know, Obrata. Yes. The guy who actually did this choreography. Mm -hmm. The smooth criminal. Yeah. He was in Nigeria with us. Really? Kofi actually invited him. Yes. Wow. He's a bit. He's a bit old now. You know, oh, okay. and we talked about the dance. And mm. because I had forgotten the choreography, mm. I could is, not... it, is it Michael? Is it Michael Peters? No, 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 not Michael Peters. Oh, not Michael Peters. No, Michael Peters. Michael Peters actually, I it's think. Trailer. The trailer, trailer, trailer. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. But he, yes, he passed have... away. Yeah, yeah. Alenso. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, so can we can we um open up and then ask our questions and then I'll also be checking on YouTube to see if we have some questions over there and uh, we'll. So if anybody has any question, I know that you know you have uh, people have indicated some questions on the chat. Um, if you want to ask them, really uh, that would be said great. A lot. Yeah. Uh, I've forgotten the name. I'll. I'll, I'll tell you. All right. All right, Faisal, you had you had a question. Oh, okay. Uh, can, can I start with um, um, uh, Mustafa? Mustafa, yeah. Odk. Yeah. Odk. 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 <laughs> yeah, our <clears throat> mine is not a question, and it's 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 kind of a response and reiterating some of what Uncle Terry have said mm -hmm. uh, about you know, copywriting and dancers being taken care of. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we are fortunate to have uh, the acting artistic director of uh, National Dance Company, Ghana Dance Ensemble mm -hmm. at the University of Ghana, uh, Dr. Na Hago. Mm -hmm. When, yeah. you know, when Uncle Terry, when you, you mentioned that, you know, we are, we, are talking, we are talking to these boys, we are encouraging them to think beyond, uh, just uh you know just how do you call it dancing and well, hold on one second okay let me, so you can see my face so just dancing and collaborating with musicians mm -hmm. which in, in the, you know in, in the long run they tend to the musicians tend to take more and they give dan the dancers a peanut mm -hmm. i just want us to look at the national dance company the members of the national dance company see for them they work for the government. They work, they work for the nation. Mm -hmm. So if we look at a national dance company, a typical former dancer of the national dance company, how is their life? How, how do they fare? How is their life after the service? After, you know, after dancing for the nation or being with the national dance company? Yes, for the first part 25 30 years, 30 years, when they come out, yeah, Mustafa, I think um, Uncle Terry wanted you to uh, go back a little bit because I think... Oh, yes, Uncle Terry, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, okay, so I was saying that the Ghana Dance Ensemble members, when they finish their service, they retire. Yeah. How is the, how is the life after retirement? Mm -hmm. For them Good who question. are in the government, they work for their government, the government mm -hmm. are aware of them. Mm -hmm. They are on the payroll. The nation is paying them every day. Supposedly, they have insurance. They have they pay towards their snakes. And so they get their pension money after they, they, they retire. Mm -hmm. How is it for them? Maybe when we look at that, when we take it from there, we can then come, you know, to people like Dance God Lloyd, who doesn't, who is not working, who is not employed by the nation, who is mm -hmm. not employed, he's not a, a government payroll. How he can also take it from. So I think, you know, talking about this, 
I would want us to, or I would want you to, 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 to talk, to speak to the Ghana dance, the members of the Ghana Dance Ensemble, their life after mm. being a member of Ghana Dance Ensemble. How is it like? Um, I, I don't know whether, is there any form of uh, pension scheme for, for such group? I know, uh, um, I, I, of course, you are not the director, uh, but, and I, I'm not even sure whether, of course, the director can actually, you know, maybe talk on their behalf. Oh, but, brother, the director uh, is here. Dr. Oh, yeah. Nahago is here. Why do you want to talk? <laughs> Let him respond. Yeah, no, I'm just saying that, I'm just saying that, Tama. um, yeah. Ago of here. Uh -huh. Oh, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, the issue of Ghana Dance Ensemble has been the uh, culture bearers of our dance traditions and uh, and so on and so forth as they perform during national programs. Um it's interesting to know that uh, they they work like um in other yeah, public servants mm. okay and so they also have their unions especially within the university of ghana there are three uh, union groups i think there are three or four there is the uh, junior staff that is still there is the uh, fusag and then um, senior staff association of ghana in fact the senior staff they have two unions and they all work their conditions of service and their promotion criteria within the public service under the university of ghana and so they have their track and their promotion grades that they follow, that they've worked hard for. So it's unionized and then it works for them. Also, they are on the SNIT pension scheme. And so um, depending on how they rise through the ranks and at what point in time or at what age they retire, they have their SNIT um, pension that is accrued to them as appropriate to their rank and their pay grade. And so, um, since they are junior staff, their pension is not so fantastic. Okay, the reason being that they enter into their job with um, either um, skill proficiency, not with um, certificates. Mm. Those with certificates are in the senior staff, and their pay grade is a little higher than the junior hmm. ranks. Now, the junior ranks also, depending on how young they enter into the program, when they rise and cross over to senior staff level, they are compensated as usual. And so um, they retire on their SNIT and they are taken care of as such. It, it, it's not the best, it's, it's really not the best. And so um, whilst they are in service, we will we'll try to, in fact, I have tried to compensate them um, as much as I can in my own unique way that I've, 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 I've designed to, and that I will not put it on it. I've designed to compensate them for that. But their take home and their pension and whatever is accrued to them is based on their pay grade and then their, their rank and how they retire at what point in time. And so okay. basically that is it. It's, it's not the best. It's not the best, but you know how it is in the a, in a public sector. So mm. Even faculty, we are still fighting. We have to go on a three-week strike <clears throat> to have our basic salary rate increase for us because our pay grade ourselves when we retire, it's there's nothing to write home about. Mm -hmm. And so um, it all boils down to the system not recognizing um, skilled labor, artistic works, and, and and compensating them as such. The creative economy is huge outside, mm -hmm. but. Um, it's it's not that huge in Ghana. And so the musicians and the dancers are trying their best. The entrepreneurs amongst us, um, the dance world lawyers, the artistic visions and the whatnot, they, we are all trying our best to to raise the awareness, to create that um, that enabling environment for, for arts to thrive. But when you go off the um, formal se sector, as in formal public service and and you are into private practice. Um, I don't know what becomes of your pension and, and what, yes, but at least the, the artists, the Ghana dance ensembles, they are short of some pension of a sort. It's not fantastic, but um, mm. that is that is what is expected, you know. Okay, all right. Mustafa, okay. are, are you answered? Yes, yes. All right, yeah, so, okay. 
So yeah, so I wanted to know uh, if Frank and Terry can. So now that we know how the Ghana Dance Ensemble, who were at the public service, mm -hmm. members of the public service, how they are faring, then we can begin to think about how the non, the, 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 you know, the individual artists who are not on the public, uh, you know, uh, government payroll, who are not employed by the nation, how they can also get some, you know, think about retirement. Okay. Which I know is not, is that an easy thing? Yes, I know yes. It's, uh, it's not easy. Papa, mm -hmm. can you hear me? Yeah. Mm. Okay, good. I think that um, I have thought through this particular discussion over and over and over and over. And it, it became, you know, a burden on my heart because um, because I also danced on the streets and I knew exactly what they take. Now, if you are not in any organization like in the government sector, public service, or any company that is uh, into the arts and you are on your own, first and foremost, you need to have a bank account. That's first. And then if you have a bank account, you have to make sure that you operate that bank account very well. So every money that you get is going into the bank accounts. Then you can now go on and make an arrangement with any private company that is into life insurance, is into pension schemes and all that. So that they can deduct that amount from your bank account without you interfering. Mm -hmm. but they will give you an update. That is the process, that, that is the way it goes with the government or those in government or those mm -hmm. in the public service. Okay, mm -hmm. so the monies are taken out per the agreement, you and, and them. You know, and I became very concerned about it lately because talking to Dance God Lloyd and his uh, friend, Afro Beast, I realized that these boys are making a lot of money. Sorry, I think something mm -hmm. something went kaput. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Um, okay, so we'll give him uh, a minute to to join back in. Um, <clears throat> but anyway. Uh, we uh, Pfizer to ask his question. Yeah, we. I know we he's so itching. Yeah, he's he's itching to ask. He has a lot of <laughs> questions. Maybe he will give us the freestyle today. Before we... Yeah. So we started with you know, uh, aspect of you know African popular dances, and uh, we went into the differences between African popular dance and uh, Afro beats, and uh, from there we went into the how some of these dances are created, the elements that comes into play when these dances are created, the differences or similarities between, or the line that runs through Afropop and traditional dances. And then of course we went into uh, how these dances, um, you know, come into the developmental space of a society the country okay. and all that. And uh, we also concentrated on some, you know, issues on royalties and, um, and now, we have questions um, that Uncle Terry was answering. Oh, Uncle Terry, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Oh, sorry. Uh, we I saw mean, your, your, your camera all over the, uh, I mean, I said, it's, it, 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 it's summer toast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now it has resurrected. <laughs> it has resurrected. Yeah. All right. So, so, um, yeah, so you can continue. Yeah. So I, I think it was very important to, because they have, um, they have formed something. In fact, I've not had the time to talk to Ziggy. Mm -hmm. But um, um, Dance God Lloyd and Afro Beast have formed something like the, the peak of the apex mm -hmm. and a whole lot of young dancers are following them. Mm -hmm. So if you are able to tackle those at the top, mm -hmm. then there is the likelihood that the young ones who are up and coming can start even before they get to that, that stage. Mm -hmm. But at that level, if you don't take care, you will easily be carried away with the wind mm -hmm. or by the wind because mm -hmm. you, know, you are just interested in 
having fun, you know, yeah. enjoying yourself mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, and, and I think that the, the, the organization that you spoke to, you, you, you alluded to before is also very important because I think as they go on, uh, you know, some of these popular dances and of course dance, it comes at a particular time. We don't know mm -hmm. when it's going, to, it's going to have a downside. So if the preparation is actually not done now, then there is also the potency that, okay, they get to a point, they've, they've enjoyed the fame. Recently, I was, I was, uh, I, I was looking at an interview with um, G Jima, is is it Jima? Yeah, Jima, right? Yeah. And, Jima, Jima. Yeah. And his rise to fame and all the things that actually happened, you know, in Ghana with the taxi driver and all that, and how he actually brought everything down. So some of these organizations, I mean, organized bodies in, in, in respect to dance can actually help to shape you know, these up and coming dancers and also give them some form of direction and information on how to, to save, how to look at their future from today. Uh, Cause of course, without that, then it's like, oh, I have the money today. Let me just spend it and that's it. All that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, yeah. Faisal. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so Faisal, um, you had something to say. You have a question, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I have a couple of um, questions. I don't know, I, maybe somehow, I mean, um, um, yeah. answered part the most the most pressing ones so that we can yeah <laughs> so for me i'm very much concerned about the the beginning of the discussion the definitions of afro pop afro beat contemporary mm -hmm. dance and this you know um um names or definition keeps coming especially um when i was doing my um, masters i even had a long discussion with benedictus i asked him what is afro Afrobeat, Afro pop. So for me, my concern is um, Angkitari, and permit me to call you by that, that name. Uh, call me any name. Can call me Terry. <laughs> can call me. What is that? Yeah, Dr. 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 Terry. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Terry. You know. <laughs> can call yes, me Terry. Dr. Terry. Robot. <laughs> they can't wait to you know call call you replace Uncle with Dr. Terry. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's long overdue. Exactly. <laughs> my, my, my question is um, the academic response, because, you know, when you're in the Western countries um, and then you look back home and some names comes up, especially what is traditional dance, what is folk, you know, uh, uh, folk dance, this sort of differences, yeah. it becomes very complicated to, yeah. to, to define your own, you know, your own culture, how to yeah. respond. So for me, um, um, this also um, question about, I'm um, sorry, these um, names, um, Afrobeat, contemporary dance, Afropop, I think that it is very, very important for the, um, the academic circle to ha have a certain definition that will uh, you know, encompass this. So it wouldn't be difficult, like, oh, what is contemporary, Africa contemporary dance, and to become, you know, it to be a big thing, how to define it or where to even find a standing to sort of describe what it was. It has been a, a challenge for me to respond to questions like that. So in thinking about it and you know, I mean, with your response earlier on, I want to also know that if there is a sort of unified way of defining these phenomenon that are happening, especially when we consider it's changing dynamics, you know, over time. Thank you very much. That is one of, one of my questions. I don't know if you want to respond now. <laughs> Can I move on to the next? Or I, <laughs> Hello, Uncle Terry. Um, Hello. Terry comes. In fact, uh, uh, Professor Nia, okay, he's here. Okay, yeah. Um, Uncle Terry, did you get the question? Oh, right up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I think he was he went in and out of yeah. So I think he, he, basically he was talking about specific definition for example Africa. Hello, Africa. Africa. Yeah, can you hear me? Angitari, yeah, Asemu, MTN, 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 MTN. Oh, he will come back. Yeah, he will <laughs> <laughs> How do you know it's, 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 all right. all right. I think he's coming back. Anyway, yeah, so. Basically... <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, so uh, Pfizer was, 
you know, asking about the, you know, some form of definition that will separate African popular dance from traditional dance and Afrobeat and all that. Is there in, in the academic circles, is there a particular definition for these uh, terms? Repeat the terms again, the, the, the names that you mentioned. Which one? I, first one Afro, yeah. I mean, I was okay. talking about Afro, Afro pop. You mentioned Afro pop, Afro beats yeah. with the S, then a contemporary yeah. African dance, a contemporary Ghanaian dance, you know, uh, or contemporary African dance. And all these uh, names kind of have certain relations or even to some extent you-, you, you All right, okay, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me first of all clarify something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, those terms that I call, yeah, that I, I mentioned, mm -hmm. I was referring to what pertains on, on YouTube and social media. Mm -hmm. When you go there, you will see African dance and they are doing Afro pop dance. Mm -hmm. You get it. They will name it African dance, but they will be doing Afro pop dance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes mm -hmm. they will say, um, uh, uh, contemporary African dance. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be doing Afro pop. Mm -hmm. So for me, what is happening on social media is that they use the names anyhow. Anybody stands up and then they'll put it there and then they'll name it something. Mm. But what I was trying to clarify mm. is the issue of Afro beats with the mm -hmm. S mm -hmm. and then the Afro beat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to also understand that in the postmodernist approach, everybody's voice is a voice. Mm -hmm. Everybody's view is a view. Mm -hmm. So you cannot just say that, okay, we are going to have a very fixed definition of something that can cover all. Mm -hmm. The Afrobeats idea is coming from those in Europe. Mm. They are pushing that idea that what they are doing is called Afro beats and has to do with their music, blah, 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 blah. Do you understand? Mm. And so I went back to explain the use of the term Afro rock by OCB South Ghana and then Afro beat by Fela, mm -hmm. okay? In the seventies, Professor Collins put all of them under what he calls Afro pop music, African Afro pop music, all right? Mm -hmm. Or Afro pop music, so to speak. Today, the young ones are now coming up to say that they are doing Afrobeat dance. And some are saying that they are doing Afropop dance. Some are saying they are doing urban Afropop. Some are saying that they are doing urban dance of Africa. So, so they have different nomenclatures. I've also heard African hip hop. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Now, some of them are arguing that when they use the term urban, okay, like urban Afropop, is a combination of the Afro-pop Afro dance, the hip-hop dance from the US, and all these pop, new pop, small, small styles that they dance in the US and in the Western world, mm. okay? They put all together, they call it Afro and um, urban Afro-pop, mm. okay? So once you see the urban, it means that they are considering all the hip-hop, the Western uh, uh, popular dances as part of it, okay? So it is up to you and I as scholars to research further into it and then come out with articles to clarify some of the things in which we, some of us have started trying to do. Mm. But we are in a, 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 a democratic education world, mm. all right? And there are several views. So you realize that the more you, you delve deeper into education, the more uncertain you become with your ideas and viewpoints. Mm. Because at the end of the day, you would not want to put down a fixed kind of uh, idea, but you say that, oh, it is neither here nor there, and that you cannot argue and say that it is solely this, because mm. some other people are saying it is this. Mm. You understand? And I realize that a lot of the scholars are now uh, uh, treading on th those grounds, mm. okay? You bring an idea, you say you want to do something in um, uh, pedagogy, all right? So you say you are doing something on pedagogy, and then they are asking, what about androgogy? Because an androgogy has to do with the, 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 the elderly people. Mm -hmm. You understand? And so scholars are now a bit um, 
eclectic in their views. They are not very specific. Mm. You understand? And it is up to you, me and you as, as, as dancers and, and, and dance practitioners and dance teachers to actually delve into the areas and then see how best we can also come up with new ideas, you know. Um, and the more ideas that you bring, the more um, you muddy the waters, actually, you know. Uh, <laughs> but yes, honestly, but that yeah. is scholarship for you. Mm -hmm. That is scholarship for you. So okay. uh, first, yes, I understand where you are coming from. Um, and <laughs> sometimes for me, it's a bit difficult, you know. But the more we get scholars in that area, the more we'll be able to see how best we can clarify it. And the more we'll get people to critique our work and, and, and rubbish it, and some will praise it. And, you know, that is scholarship. So, mm. you know. Let, let, okay. Let's put in our best foot, uh, you know, and contributions right. to make it, yeah. All right. Um, can I go to Miss Valerie? Miss Valerie, you had a couple of questions. I'm, I'm not sure whether uh, you're still here. Um, uh, Val yes. Yeah, I did have some uh, a question, and that was more like a societal, a societal uh, uh, issue regarding um, how do we view dance and uh, uh Afro pop now is it because of its ascension? Uh, do you feel like the the value of dance has a little bit changed, and also because of the economy uh, that it brings back to the country? Do you think that now people are more willing to to accept Afro uh, dance uh, as a, as a profession? And uh, I believe that Dr. Terry, you did mention that about the government. I think that that does have a very important. A function in, and role in that uh, by attaching uh, art to the government. So, but what do you um, think now? Th people are changing. Is, is, is there a shift in people's mind now? Not at all. <laughs> not at all. I wouldn't say that at all because, um, yes, uh, comparatively, if you look at the number of persons, even though I don't have the statistics, mm -hmm. but offhead, and uh, from uh, what I can see around, uh, a few people have noticed that some of these dancers have gone international, all right? They mm -hmm. are being invited across the world to go and teach dances and all that. But mm -hmm. they have still not been able to impact the nation across board, okay? Until the Ghanaian public will see them in some world something, competition or something that they have excelled. Ghanaians are very, very conservative in their ideas as far as dance is concerned. And I you know, know that I know that some uh, I I don't know I, I think the name escaped me, but some two guys actually went to a world competition. I, I, I'm not sure the name of the. I think are they musicians? Like, no, no, no. Yeah, they were they were musicians, and actually they went for a dance competition or something like that. Oh, I see. Oh, um, is it that? Is it that guy who was with a uh, baby grandma some time back and left? No, um, there are two. These two guys, they, yeah, they is it Bolly and someone. Yes, yes. Bolly. Yes. Bolly. Bolly. Yes. Bolly. No, no, Bolly, they are musicians. Oh, music, yeah. music. It was a musical. Oh, okay, okay, got you. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I thought that Bolly was, and uh, his friend. Yeah, in fact, yeah. I did their videos for them, both oh. of them. But they did. Just they did some dancing, right? It was more like a dance and the music. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah maybe. And, so I didn't. Want and, to and I think I think he also went viral a little bit, but. Of course, they but they are not in the country. Actually. Yeah, but the push is Ghana. what we are talking. Okay, so the push is what we are actually talking about as to whether yeah. um, the Ghanaian uh, community will actually push some of these people, you know, because they are doing dance and all that. Is that what you you are referring to? Um, uh, yes and no. Hmm. The the issue is that once what you you do, in fact, in our time, once what you do goes worldwide, all right? Mm -hmm. And they air it on TV. And don't forget, we had one TV station at that time, mm -hmm. which went across the whole nation. Yeah, G G so one, is it GBC yes. or GCB? GBC. GBC, GBC TV. <laughs> yeah, the GBC, GBC TV. Uh -huh. Okay. So Broadcasting once, Corporation. yes. So once they aired it, mm -hmm. and a lot of people across the nation get that information. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, there are several TV stations, several of them, Okay, so mm -hmm. one TV station can air what you have done, mm -hmm. the other would not. Mm -hmm. You know, so unless you do something that is very, very, like the Olympic Games, mm -hmm. you know, the guy who won the bronze, you know, was yeah. met 
at the airport. Mm -hmm. You know, with <laughs> people with drums in <laughs> oh, Ghana. Yeah. You know, but they didn't even know his training ground when he started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you understand? I, nobody knew, nobody, I don't yes. know, is it Tay, Tay or something? Yes, yeah, something. No, nobody. You understand? Yeah. So, what did he, the, what did he the, mean? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 yeah, it was, it, it was boxing on the Olympics. Oh, won, was it? Okay. The Bronx, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he won the, the, the bronze. Mm -hmm. Third place. The only person mm -hmm. who won. The only person. The only person who won something. The only. Hmm. Do you understand? Hmm. And so they had to go and meet him. And that is the, that is, that is our psyche. That is how. We, we deal with issues like that. Yeah, so until I just think someone wondered. Yeah, well until, you, until you go up there, nobody sees uh, you. Like exactly. nobody pushes you up. Right? Exactly. You have to. Okay, so what the boy, these young boys are doing is that because of the democratic nature of social media, mm. they have managed to push themselves there mm -hmm. and keep pushing and keep pushing. Mm -hmm. So if you don't watch TV, you go on social media and mm -hmm. you find them there. Yeah. You know, and so they have, instead of being recognized nationwide, they are being recognized across the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so they've, they've um, um, actually outdone the nation and mm -hmm. gone ahead. Mm -hmm. All right. And so they are getting most of their um, remuneration from mm -hmm. the jobs that they do across the world. Mm -hmm. There are classes in Ghana, it is, I think, uh, 50 cities or so. Mm. Per head or something like that, you know. I don't know how they do. I've not even interviewed them on that, which mm. I will do uh, pretty soon. Mm. But you know, and um, still, a lot of the people in the nation have not actually recognized it. But mm. I know that one bank, I think Stambik Stam Bank, mm. invited him and uh, Dance God Lloyd to come and teach them. Mm. You know, and this is where I want dancers to get. Okay, yeah. they invited him to come and teach them and dance, mm. to have a workshop or something with them. Mm. And then he went and he did it. And they enjoyed it so much because it was dance called Lloyd. They have been mm. seeing him, you know, mm -hmm. going viral across the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. That is the Ghanaian mentality. Mm. You know, once they know that, hey, everything that we say is for them important. <laughs> you know what they said finally? They wanted him to come back again, I think in December, mm. for, for uh, another workshop with them. Mm. Okay? The check for his payment was signed, but it was empty. Really? You know what that means? You can ask for any amount. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Because, because the staff mm. the, from the head mm. through the staff, they mm. are all middle class and upmarket people. Mm -hmm. So they are always playing with social media. Mm. And they see him there in your face every time. Mm. So now they are prepared to pay him any amount. And that is pop dance. Wow. Pop <laughs> dance, which belongs to the underclass, they say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So, and that's what told me that they said it's an open check. Just tell us what you want to chat. <laughs> we'll run the company down. <laughs> wow. You get it? Yeah. And this guy is like 20 something 27 28 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now okay so the i think that we need to to guide them because they become more or less like the voice mm -hmm. of the up and coming now mm -hmm. all right we need to advise them to make sure that they send that education to all the up and coming ones those who want to mm -hmm. be like mm -hmm. that you need a pension scheme you need this scheme you need that which you have to pay mm -hmm. you know religiously you mm -hmm. know so mm -hmm. that your future will be secure Okay. You know, so um, there is a question on uh, on our YouTube channel. It says, "Does Coupe de Calais fall under the term African popular dance, and when did it emerge?" Okay, so what I did in my, I think my master's thesis, uh, which I which I'm not too proud of anyway, but I'll take it like that. Um, <laughs> what I did in my master's thesis is that I categorized that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all the Francophone dancers, I categorize them into one, Francophone mm -hmm. pop dancers. Mm -hmm. Okay. I separated that from the pop dancers of the um, Anglophone African countries. Mm -hmm. Because the Francophone pop dancers have their own musical 
style and type. Mm -hmm. Okay. And 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 therefore the 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 and they are the group of different African countries mm -hmm. who come together. And so they were also creating their own Afropop kind of francophone Afropop style mm -hmm. that was circulating among them. Mm -hmm. And then once in a while some would drop in our uh, freestyle performances. Mm -hmm. You understand? So yeah, yeah so in, 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 in even in my pop dance technique, I have that technique, the francophone mm -hmm. technique. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have the uh, anglophone pop dance technique, which are mm -hmm. the guares and then the mm -hmm. shaku shaku and then the azonto and mm -hmm. all those uh, pilolo and all those dances, mm -hmm. you know, um, style. Mm -hmm. You get it. So um, yes, they will be, they are sometimes classified. In fact, when you keep googling, you go and see Afro pop dance, and then mm -hmm. you see that it is a francophone kind of dance. So they are also mm -hmm. part of the Afro pop, mm -hmm. you know, okay. but there are distinctions okay. in the when you delve deeper into them. Yeah, and you know when it, when it, it, it emerged? When it emerged, huh, I think that it has been around, maybe when it became very popular, mm. is maybe the question you want to ask. Mm -hmm. Because I remember in the 19, around 1989, 1990, there was this uh, musician called Sasbi. Mm -hmm. Who produced a music called Esther? Me mm and my dear co, actually Esther. And we used to dance for him, okay. Mm -hmm. But he was based in Togo, okay. Lome. So we we'll travel to Togo. He will invite us to travel to Togo when he's going to do a show. Mm -hmm. So myself and Slim Buster were dancing for him, and then two of our girls mm -hmm. would we'll travel to Togo to his house. He will come us. We we'll rehearse, and then we we'll go and do the show. Mm -hmm. So um, during I stay in his house. Mm -hmm. The Togo television, we were forced to watch Togo television. Mm -hmm. And you see these dancers, these musicians, you know, around that time, you know, doing their dances. So their dances were in vogue, actually, mm -hmm. uh, around that time, the 80s, thereabout. And um, they used to do that, you know, but I think it grew and went very viral, viral when this guy did the Kwasa Kwasa. Mm -hmm. Kwasa Kwasa, Kwasa. Yeah. You know, it went very, very viral. And then uh, um, those uh, guys, um, Amulanga people, mm -hmm. also came out with their music. And then they also went viral. That is when it actually started going very, very fast. Sorry. Oh, hello. Did somebody say something? Magic uh, system. Yeah, magic system. Magic system. Mm. Yes. So, yes, they are, they are dancing that uh, has been around, you know. Okay. Um, All right. um, magic systems. Time. Yeah, yeah. Magic systems, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Agu. All right. Uh, Dictus' hand was up real quick. Maybe Dictus, apart from uh, Dictus, if it probably will end with uh, Dictus, if there is no more questions. Uh, Dictus, your hand was up. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, I think I think I, I, might, I might have missed this, but then um, I just want to ask um, to Terry. We can't see your face. We can't. We want to see your face. <laughs> Why do you want to see my face? <laughs> I, my face. My face can't appear on Zoom today. Um, I, Uncle Terry. Uncle Terry gave us fantastic um, um, benefit, as is well as in how the guys are making money out of social media and everything. But then I also want to know. Maybe maybe he said it and I didn't get, I didn't get it. The, the ramifications of all these social media, the downsides, how is it affecting the dance? How is it affecting these dancers? How is it excluding some people from this whole social media craze? Or how is it marginalizing again these youth who are already marginalized? Oh, okay. Yes, I think I know where you're going because uh, it's not everybody who handles a fool. Mm -hmm. And it's not everybody who has a fool. And therefore, without that, um, you cannot um, actually get access to social media platform. But now let's do a comparative analysis mm -hmm. or comparative study of the scenarios. Okay. So the scenarios during our time and the scenario now. Okay. Mm -hmm. In our time, there was only one TV station and then two radio stations. The two no radio stations, media. one and no social media. 
nothing. And the, the mobile, the phones were landline. Mm -hmm. And when they ring, it sounds <laughs> Now, that was our time. Mm -hmm. Even accessing television at that time was not possible. Now, let me tell you the reason why all those dances, Meza um, uh, and Bajos and all those dances, we don't have records of them. Because mm. it was a national kind of policy mm. that these dances were foreign dances that were infiltrating our culture. Okay. And therefore, if you want to go on TV to go and do such performances, it is not allowed. Anybody mm. who does that in the TV station, you find yourself being transferred or being sacked, really? possibly. Yes. So our dances mess up and we're not captured on television mm. so so with the with the uh with a dance competition i've not that... i've not finished i was going to talk about okay the all right, okay. So, right. Comparative yeah. so this is our scenario mm -hmm. in our time and you cannot walk into the tv station and say that oh i'm coming to perform mm -hmm. for the nation to see me yeah okay mm -hmm. and therefore you have to do it in another way mm -hmm. by going to the jamboree centers and going to perform so yeah. that they will see you. And then mm -hmm. people can also pick from you. And then they will go to another Jamboree station and go and perform. And so through that, so our transfer of pop dance knowledge was physical. Mm. And it was through, um, it was through uh, the secondary school. So those who were in the secondary cycle institutions, they, when they go home, they go and learn the dances. And when they come to school, we all amalgamate. And then we perform there. But today, Several people have, today, several people have mobile phones, mm -hmm. okay? And so they are able to democratically speak their mind with yeah. movements, you understand? They can access it without any controls. Nobody is being sacked to go home mm -hmm. from work <laughs> because it's social media, it is there, it is virtual. Just enter, okay? Mm -hmm. Hello, I am on um, a Zoom meeting, I'll call you back. Sorry about that. No, no problem. So um, um, uh, basically, it, that is the scenario. So Benedictus, um, yes, some of them are being marginalized, but it is much better than during our time. Mm. Our time, the marginality was very, very grievous. Mm. You know, so you needed to, in fact, they didn't, those marginalized that you are referring to today, they didn't even have the money to access the Jamboree centers mm. to go and dance and see the dances. So if somebody learns it and goes into a bar where it is free, you know, and the person drinks a little and gets a bit slightly tipsy <laughs> and wants to do a movement in front of the bar, then they can have access to these dances. Mm -hmm. You understand? Or somebody goes to a, 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 a wedding or a, 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 a outdooring ceremony or a funeral ceremony. That is where they used to, the, the marginalized people learn it, mm -hmm. those dances and be able to have access to. All right? Mm -hmm. And if you are lucky, and you have learned it and learned it well, and you're able to jump into the fray when there's a funeral or an outdoor ceremony, and, and you jump into the fray and you perform. People give you money. And that is what, how we used to make money when I was on the streets dancing. Mm -hmm. You know, it was outdoor ceremonies. So we're always fishing out for outdoor ceremonies. Um, <laughs> and you, you, yeah, you mm -hmm. know, you, you see any outdoor ceremony, I'm not, then I'm not be you, 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 you actually go there and go and walk around, mm -hmm. you know, but because you are popular, somebody will come and ask, oh, can't you dance for us? Mm. Then you say, okay, oh, well, okay, okay, let me do one dance. Mm -hmm. But you, you came there because of that. Yeah. <laughs> and then the person will, the person will take the microphone and go, well, ladies and gentlemen, we have Sir Robot here. He says that he wants to give you a dance. Maybe, meanwhile, I did not say that. <laughs> the person came to talk to me. You understand? And then you go on, onto the floor. Mm. Once you start dancing, they start dishing you money. Mm. You understand, mm. you know, and at that time we didn't have managers. Yeah. Okay. So when they start dashing you money, people come to the state to come and collect the money. for you. Mm. you understand? And because they are not your managers, by the time the money comes to you, it has half been half. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think one of my questions was that with, with the, so that... I don't know whether I've answered oh, the yeah. Yeah, but, I... Um, I th but I yeah, think, but I think that yes, there's, there's still going to be marginality because people mm. not have access to social media. Yes, there is going to be that group of persons who will be marginalized. 
But I think they still have their forum where they form their dance ciphers in, in, in the communities when there's a music playing and outdoor ceremony or something. They still have that forum to, you know, voice themselves out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a quick follow up. Yeah. Um, I also asked about how the social media trend actually affects the dance. Yeah. And in this case, I'm talking about ownership. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, now let me let me let me answer that question one quickly. Okay. So in our time, um, creation of popular dance was organic. Okay. It it evolved. Okay. It it evolved out of the different conversations that we have during performances, during jamborees and all that. Then the dance will come out. Then all of a sudden you see that it has been given a name. You understand? And all these things were uh, crystallized in the human body. And then it came out and it was the choice of name and everything was like inch perfect. Mm. You understand? What is happening today is that a scenario was created that when Azonto went viral and became popular across the world, people were trying to lay claim to it. All right? So... Mm -hmm suddenly everybody realized that if you're able to come out with a dance that goes viral and you're able to say with authority that you created the dance, your name will go viral. You become popular across mm -hmm. the world, just like Ziggy did, mm -hmm. right? So then people started trying to do that. But before that, Robert Clark, who is the organizer of the uh, dance festival, International Dance Festival in Ghana, had also thought about the fact that because Azonto came out and went viral and everybody was attributed it to Ghana, if we are able to create these dances by ourselves and put it out there and they go viral, the dances will be connected to Ghana. Mm. Meanwhile, by so doing, and this is purely my analysis, mm. by so doing, he was disrupting the organicness of the popular dance that we were creating. Mm. Because now people were consciously trying to create something. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so as to whether it is something that has crystallized from the, the body yeah. itself w w became questionable. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. But that is the way culture too is formed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Culture evolves. Mm -hmm. So once the system changes, the human body also changes in a way. Mm. to accommodate it and the evolution continues okay mm. so um i would say there is yes um the the influence of social media has created some kind of a disruption mm -hmm. as far as pop dance is, is concerned mm. but within the same system okay the the there is that systematizing of the system mm. It means that you have disrupted the system, created another system, which is what we have now, social media platform. Mm -hmm. That system that has been created has become a form of a culture that Pierre Bordeaux will say is the habitus, okay? Mm -hmm. That habitus is now going through a systematization. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you create a system it is established. That system also go through a, 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 a series of systematization. And all that is what he terms as the habitus. So yes, some people, uh, social media is affecting the creation of the pop dance and the, the dialogic nature of it and all that. People are creating things and cl claiming ownership and all that. Now we have specific names being mentioned. Hitherto, we didn't have specific names being mentioned as who is creating pop dance. Mm -hmm. But today we can say that Ziggy created this, dance God created this and all that, yes. But over time, you will see that the system will be established in a way that will create another cycle that is going mm -hmm. on, okay? So it, it, it's a yes and no for me, mm -hmm. you understand? Yes, there's been this influence on necessarily disrupting the mode of creation. 
but it is now also creating another way, you know, that you realize that out of that, you would get people who become the where to go. You know, they are dictating the pace. And because pop is actually not static, the names will change over time. You realize that now we have that, but you realize that over time, the names will change, you know, because that is pop. That's the nature of pop, okay? Mm. A few years back, it was Daddy Lumba. It was Kodio Enchi. It was Sofran Ponsa. It's the same thing mm. that happens within the pop realm. And I know it's going to change. But if you make your mark, you make your mark. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you'll be a point of reference yeah. for people, mm -hmm. all right? Just like Ajete Soa made his mark, you know, mm -hmm. at a point in time. Just like Alex Ufori made his mark. Mm -hmm. Just like Ebenezer Konai made his mark. Slim Buster made his mark. Uh, Oboja made his mark. Mm -hmm. I made my mark. Nanai Aredu made his mark. Sonia um, Achiba. Sonia Achiba. Sorry? Sonia Achiba. Sonia Achiba. <laughs> Sonia Achiba made his mark in music. Mm -hmm but not particularly in dance. But he was a dancer. We used to dance together. George hmm. Jara. George Jara in music. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those were, when those were huge marks. Me. What? You know, so those were, some of them, they were huge marks that people mm -hmm. made, you know, mm -hmm. in time. But that is the nature of pop. Mm -hmm. It evolves. So once it moves on, it moves on, mm -hmm. you know, and you become history. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe your last words, and maybe you can also add, uh, what new thing are you doing in the area of popular dance? And uh, you can you can conclude with your last Okay. Words. So what, what I am planning to do is, um, is going to be a, a project mm -hmm. that I have been planning mm -hmm. together with Benedictus before you left. Okay. You know, um, I've been planning to chronicle... <laughs> <laughs> what? He just laughed. Yeah, I've been, before he left, he left. Where is he? Where we don't know. Where is he? <laughs> He's in Canada, Mustafa. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so before he left to Canada. Okay, so um, we're planning to chronicle the Ghanaian um, social, political, and pop history. Hmm. Okay. So, you know, I've given you a gist of it during mm -hmm. the time of Adaha mm -hmm. and how Yaponsa came up. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to chronicle that throughout our time, the various sociopolitical ep epochs. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is what my thesis is about, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, and the sort of dances that came and why those dances? Mm -hmm. What was the commentary? What was it about? What was the, the situation, the sociopolitical situation? that caused those dances to be created. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a whole production performance with narratives mm -hmm. that we try to explain so that the Ghanaian community will get the picture better and mm -hmm. understand how these dances are not actually dances that have been created out of the blues, but have, have been created from the influences of society Mm. the politics of society and the key issues in society mm. and how they've tried to, you know, democratically um, talk about them mm. using their bodies. Okay. Okay. Um, right. in, 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 in relation to pop music, mm. you know, because they do that in tandem with pop music, popular music. Mm. And, and how they have tried to, to speak to the issues surrounding them. Mm. You understand? Mm. Uh, and, and, and I've tried, uh, researched a lot of them. And you mm. can see the tragedy and how beautifully these young ones are speaking, but society is not hearing. It's not listening. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You understand? Um, I, I, I remember. It's not listening, it's not listening let alone hearing. Mm. <laughs> You know. I remember yeah. um, our our own Oni Oni Kwesuwa had uh, this um, uh, you know symbolic ear uh, exactly yeah um, the telephone the telephone, telephone answer, with, yeah, so yeah. 
it's like Under. somebody's talking and nobody's listening uh, yeah uh, exactly. kind of thing and uh, which is also very very symbolic and and i i mean i believe that if uh, uh decision makers are able to investigate the intricacies of this movement and see the plight of the youth what they are saying um it will it will go a long way to help with the developmental purposes or agendas you know of, of various communities but unfortunately exactly. as you said um nobody is people are talking yes. but nobody's listening exactly and, um, that is part you know. of my mm-hmm. catchphrase in the production mm-hmm. and i would um i would make sure that if the production is uh, to come on off definitely uh, some of these uh, politicians will be caught mm-hmm. because if they had if they had studied the youth, what the youth were saying very yeah. well about yeah. Azonto dance, yeah. you know, yeah. they would have realized that they were asking for jobs. Yeah. They were yeah. asking for jobs. You know, yeah. when Azonto craze became the craze uh, mm-hmm. around 2011 um, and, and t- from 2010 into 2011, 2012 thereabout, you know, the, mm-hmm. ju- the youth were talking about jobs because mm-hmm. Azonto means apa. The girls mm-hmm. called it apa. The dance was called mm-hmm. apa. Mm-hmm. Apa means work. Mm-hmm. All right. So these mm-hmm. young ones were asking mm-hmm. for for jobs mm-hmm. and work, you know. But mm-hmm. the government was not listening. So mm-hmm. any political party who had listened to that mm-hmm. and have had used that as mm-hmm. part of their campaign mm-hmm. slogan. Yeah. and promises would have won hands down yeah you know yeah, yeah. So that's right i think they are uh, making uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. was Dick yeah something? Uh, yeah i wanted to say something yes um if they had listened but if they had listened how 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 do they actually pinpoint this um subliminal uh, whatever that is in there because they are I'm not, they are, I don't even know how to say what they are not they are not dance people let me put it that way they don't exactly. understand this, they don't understand this non-verbal um um dance quotes mm. and even yeah. even these dancers are not putting them in there deliberately some of them are like you said subconscious so it's not mm. it's not direct so mm. so then it yeah. becomes it becomes a bit um challenging if 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 we we lay the the the, the okay, so let me let me of these policy yeah, people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me let me try and answer that quickly. Um, the issue about the conscious putting something there consciously. Per my investigation, the subconscious one that you put there for me is much stronger mm. than what you put there consciously because that mm-hmm. one. It becomes an individual thing. Mm-hmm. It becomes your viewpoint. Yeah. But these dances are created as a communal thing. It evolves out of a communal thing. Mm-hmm. All right. So you are speaking, I'm speaking, he's speaking. And out of that process of speaking, we bring it out. It's a very complex kind mm-hmm. of thing to, to research. Mm. Do you understand? So for me, that is more much more stronger it's just like that the way that they produce the traditional dances Mm -hmm. and the philosophical and the paintings and all that Mm -hmm. okay that is the nature okay so in the traditional dance they'll tell you 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 cannot put your hand on who created it Mm -hmm. the same way before the advent of social media pop dance you could not put your hand a finger Mm -hmm. on who created this dance because it was a communal thing Mm -hmm. Then they'll say, oh, uh, there's a new dance with so Skokba Yeah. Where did it come from? Okay. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. But it says Bajos. Bajos, Gawet, Bajomohi. Mm-hmm. Bajomohi means relax, the English word. Yeah. At that time, the Wahala, the, all the Rollins Wahala, there was farming, Ghanaian repatriation from Nigeria. There was, the rain had not fallen for a very long time. And so when the, finally the rain fell around 85, ending of 84, 85, and the rain fell, floods, a lot of harvest, fish in the sea, blah, blah, blah. The youth said, now let's relax more. Well, it's all, <laughs> we are tired. You're tired. So, yeah. uh-huh. 
Okay. You understand? So some mm. of those times when it was a communal creation, mm. it was it was a very organic. Mm. All right. Now that issue of you putting it out there as a viewpoint by yourself and saying that oh, I am tackling it, you are moving into activism. Okay. Mm. Mm. Um, um uh, and that has a different I mean feel because it is more or less like an individual viewpoint and he wants to push it so that everybody accepts it. Mm. You understand? As against all of us creating something and it becoming something that is organic from within us. And I find that very, very powerful. Mm. I don't know whether Benedictus have been able to tackle your, your viewpoint to, to, to some extent, mm. but that is scholarship. You understand? You, yeah, you, yes. You, uh, yeah, um, I, I was actually talking about, yeah, you, you tackled it, but then um, I'm asking about why we should put the blame on the doorsteps of policy makers like that because they, not, they okay because okay. they might so, they might not necessarily understand these um uh, these quotes that you are yeah. talking about and this yes. is, i i think that perhaps you know the collaboration if there was a collaboration where uh, of course they are dance practitioners they are dance callers who understand you know some of these things just like you know doctors if if a if a government a governmental institution needs information about for example covid-19 of course they wouldn't use their own perception they would have to go see doctors researchers in the area maybe noguchi and then make you know get those reports and those information from them so i think that um, if there is if the governmental organization also collaborate with some of these uh, of for example uh, uh, uncle terry for instance they will or he will give them information or they will give them information about what is trending or what, what the bodies are saying within, you know, the Afro, Afro pop uh, community. And yeah, yeah. perhaps that can also help. Or, or, or what do you think? Yes, but, yeah. yes, yes, very, very much so. Uh, you know, it, it, it is one of the arguments I've made, you mm -hmm. know, over time. But I think simply okay. put, let me, what can simply be done? Maybe they are not aware of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe they are not aware of it, but some of the titles that they give the dancers are very self-explanatory. Mm. It tells you straightforward mm. where, where what is happening on the ground. Mm. Okay, like mm -hmm. like the mezal. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. the title of the dance is telling you something. Mm. And if once you are able to say that I am looking at the social political situation mm -hmm. and its connection to dance, some mm -hmm. of these things you can easily tease out. Yeah, but it will mean we have to educate them on that. Of course. All right, which is our tool as dance as as dance um, practitioners and, and 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 teachers and researchers. Okay, mm -hmm. it is our tool. We have that. Okay? okay, but so it is up to us to teach them and let them know that. First of all, and I've stated that in my thesis, and I know Benedictus, you may you, you, you may have read it. I have stated it in the in my thesis that the first point of call is the name of the dance, mm -hmm. where you can decipher information. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, the name and title of the dance, mm. okay? So if the dance is telling you that APA, Jobs. All right? The Azonto, it's on the, it's, it's, it's on, it's on the internet. Mm -hmm. The beginning of Azonto, when you read uh, by, what's his name? Deborah, mm. something Deborah, yeah? He wrote Ame, that. Is it Ame or Deborah? That uh, Azonto was originally called APA. Meanwhile, I had gone to Accra to interview Tete mm. uh, of Blessing. I think he died. He passed this year or something. Mm. Slim Buster's prime dancer. Mm. And then I brought to the school when I, oh, I did yeah, a yeah, paper yeah, on yeah. Azuntu. Yeah, yes. I remember mm -hmm. him. The died. Do, yeah. yeah. He died recently. Okay. I went to interview him and he is the one who told me that Azonto, when it started, it started among the guns and they called it APA. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Then I went, finally, Googled it and I saw this guy who has written about it and said that it was originally called APA. Mm. APA is language. Mm. It means work. So if you are a guy, mm -hmm. politician, and you hear a dance called APA, you should be informed. Mm. What do you, the youth are saying? But you see, they don't even know that these dances are created by the marginalized youth. Mm. They don't know. They are not yeah, interested. Yeah. Complete oblivion. <laughs> yes. You see? All right. They are not interested because they think that, oh, street boys come out with anything. But when yeah. you get to politics, you see Nanado oh, yeah. and Domahama, 
trying to do Azonto and doing this <laughs> so that they'll get they'll get All a right. following. Yeah. You understand? Um, yeah. We, okay, we should be wrapping up. Uh, I know Faisal's hand is up. Okay, Faisal, real quick, and then we can. Because I yes, think we have yes, spent, yes, you know, almost, I mean, yeah. this discussion is very, very interesting. I also, and Benedictus' question has really, really raised an important um, aspect of this communication reception kind of relationship. For me, exactly. I, 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 I also want to ask, um, what about the reception of the dance itself? Because when these dance are created from a point of, you know, activist perspective, and over time, the reception becomes more of an entertainment you know, mm -hmm. perspective. So there is a sort of disjoint in there. People create mm -hmm. to you know present their needs, but the reception becomes a form of entertainment. So we don't really see the the sort of relationship. And for me, I think that the the, the divide is somewhere in the middle. Maybe yeah. and of course, you know, academics, scholars, um, people of you know practitioners will have to sort of connect this creation and reception that sort of communicates the needs of you know, community in order for politicians or, you know, policymakers to be receptive to such needs. Yeah, that is what I just want to achieve. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that is that is what I meant by educating the, the, the politicians and letting them know, okay? Um, uh, I, I, I'm also beginning to think that if you also don't take care, you know, the whole thing is like a system, okay? Uh, it's like an ecosystem, okay? Mm -hmm that operates in a way, okay? Mm -hmm. Once you get people to know some of the way things are done within that system, mm -hmm. the system is all becomes disrupted again mm -hmm. and then it will recalibrate itself. Okay. Okay, just like I explained with the habitus, all right? Mm -hmm. Systematizing the system, okay? Yeah. So um, once the politicians get to know, they will react to it in a way. Okay. Once the youth also know that now the politicians know what we are saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they are reacting to what we are saying in a way. The whole system will now begin to recalibrate itself mm. to get <laughs> into an organic situation. And so it is a very complex. It, yeah, it is. It is complex. And Terry, look. Um, it is. It, it is very. There are some content content creators, all right, that put yeah. parody on internet, and then you, it reflects the exact situation that or problems that they want to communicate with dance, it's very challenging, you know? Yeah. And for me, I also think that creators themselves can also find a way of making their message, you know, um, loud and clear. Because Okufado wouldn't really watch Azonto and decode, like Benedictus said, decode the message that, you know, the, the, the child living in a community or um, a youth living in a community wants to put across. But if, the messages are codified in a way that sort of are representational or you know gives a certain understanding of the exact message they want to put across that may suffice but of course it's a bit yes, you know, yes. You, you are you are you, yes you are still going into the activism you know uh, realm what actually happens in pop dance is slightly different from what happens in pop music because pop music is language yeah, that you can speak and understand. Okay, mm -hmm. and understand. Pop dance is different. It is symbolic. It is yeah. more dance in itself is symbolic mm -hmm. in any case. But yeah. pop dance is even more symbolic, mm -hmm. and it can and because they they even rely on traditional dances and use them unconsciously, and all these mm -hmm. things are happening unconsciously. Mm -hmm. So you'd be surprised you go and interview a pop dancer on Azonto. And he himself does not know yeah. that this is what I am saying. Mm -hmm. but then he you will tell you that, oh, it's just entertainment. We are entertaining ourselves and we are. And when you read uh, 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 Karen Barber's uh, work, mm -hmm. she says it in there that some of them produce works. Okay. Um, yeah. It was getting interesting. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure uh, he was saying some of them produce work that they themselves can't really uh, link up to. But I, I think it. I think it's very. It's very interesting. Sometimes our bodies produce 
some innermost feelings and understandings that uh, we are not even conscious about. And um, and it tells a lot of stories. It, it gives a lot of information and all I mean, that. I mean, yeah, and, you're right. You're right. And I'm sure that is what um, Uncle Terry is alluding to. You know, one thing, one, one important thing is um, mm -hmm. when you look at American hip hop, for example, hip hop has a strong message that, mm -hmm. you know, it reflects the black community. Mm -hmm. And these messages are very loud and clear. Yeah. In addition to um, fashion, graffiti, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, and other, 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 other phenomena. It makes it very much, you know, visible. A politician would definitely know what is happening in the community. Mm -hmm. But when you take Azonto, for example, it doesn't really sort of capture such essence. And there's that sort of communication divide. Yeah. Because Azonto, if you make a boxing fist, Mm -hmm. Are you representing okay that there's a community that does that you know does boxing? If you want to talk about you know um, looking for um, for example the APA that uh, Terry was talking about, mm -hmm. how would the politician realize that the youth really need work? You know. Yeah, I, I think I think with that uh, I think he Uncle Terry said that you know once f first of all the first place to look out or some the first thing to look out for is the name. And yeah, the name might not be, uh, might not give the full information, but again, connecting to practitioners and also working in, uh, with them, it might give you, they might link, you know, one and two, and then give you an idea of what is actually going on. Um, and of course, different traditions have it differently. So uh, pop, uh, hip hop, as you said, um, you know, speaks in a particular style and African popular dance because it's also rooted in a, in, in a different tradition also, you know, evolves in a, in a different style. And of course, within the, the culture or yeah, where these dances evolve, yeah, having a conversation, having a research or, or I mean, researching within these spaces can actually give you that idea. And of course, talking to the people who have done some research in this in this uh, particular uh, spaces will give you, you know, ideas of what is actually going on on the ground. Um, I'm not sure whether Uncle Terry may join us again, but I think we've done almost two hours, 40 minutes. Whew, that's, <laughs> that's I was lot. just going to add something, Philip, uh -huh. yes. uh, regarding the hip hop. I think we have mm -hmm. to make a difference between the hip hop dance mm -hmm. and the hip hop lyrics. Yes. So, yes. so, you know, if you look at the hip hop dance, you don't know really what it's about, but you have mm -hmm. to link the original hip hop, not the commercial one, mm -hmm. but the original hip hop to uh, to the lyrics and what came out of the urban cities. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we okay. know what hip hop is about because they all came together. It was kind mm -hmm. of like coming as a block. The mm -hmm. lyrics, the music, the 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 the, the DJs, mm -hmm. uh, um, the graffitis, everything came together. So mm -hmm. basically, dance didn't just show up. Yeah. The hip hop dance yeah. didn't come up on its own. It was mm -hmm. kind of like a whole, you know, a, a whole thing. It was mm. synch it was synchronized, it was combined, it came together. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's the, that's right there. I mean, so um yeah, that's 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 deep and that's a lot of information. And thank you for that, Miss G. Um so uh, I think Faisal uh, wanted to talk. <laughs> oh I, I, I think his his hand has been up. You know, since okay. <laughs> he's opening his hand up. Sorry, um, my hand was already up. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to add a media, the media to also influence hip hop mm -hmm. to be, you know, hip hop. Because mm -hmm. Pfizer, all, all, all Pfizer, all Pfizer wants to say is that we should standardize mm -hmm. our dance, the dance that, we, you know, the Afro beat, Afro pop should be standardized, just like how we have the hip hop mm -hmm. standardized. You know, if someone is B boy, they are B boy. Someone is Popping, they are they are, they are they are known for popping. So, but it's all together. Yeah. They are all hip hop, but they have mm -hmm. different. And we have that too in the Afro beat, Afro pop. But mm -hmm. it's still very new right now. Mm -hmm. But I think what Faisal is trying to caution us is that since it is new, and for us in the academia, we can start categorizing, codifying these these. Uh, uh, these genres, these differences, so they know. Otherwise, mm -hmm. the white people will come and do it for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Which is what they do, right? Yes. Exactly. So that's what, that's what, yeah, exactly. that's, that's what, exactly. that's, yeah, that's what Faisal is trying to say that, and I tell you, you since you, right now you are, if I, if, if I should recommend anyone 
that anybody who comes to me to say, oh, I, I need you to talk to me about hip hop, about oh, uh, Afro beat, Afro pop. I will refer the person to you. Tafa, Terry's phone is dead, so he's not here. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. So I will. His <laughs> okay, so I will. Any by any researcher who wants to talk about Afrobeat to Uncle Terry. Mm. So right now, since the genre is fairly new, we should get. The, we can use hip hop. I mean, mm. there's nothing wrong with. Copying something that is good. <laughs> but we uh, can but use I, it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm sorry, but I just want to put an idea right now, which is hip hop come originally from Africa. Some of the movements are similar from African uh, uh, traditional movements. You know, there's yes. a lot of movements that came, you know, that are similar. So we yes. have to understand that hip hop comes from Africa. Yes. So again, again, this is why. We are having this argument right now. Right now, if you if you ask people where hip hop is coming from, everybody will tell you America, because we did not probably we did not standardize it. Mm. I remember when Azonto happened. Uh, 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 Azonto when Azonto started, Nigerians claimed it. They had these two pop popular. Uh, what what are they? The twins. What are they called? Yeah, the twins. Please remove yeah. the twins. <laughs> the twins. Uh, uh, no, uh, is that P square? No, P square. P square. Mm -hmm. P square. Oh, okay. Have we talked yeah, about they, the... yeah, yeah. No, they are not in, in French. The French uh, people. The, yeah, <laughs> they are. They are called P square. They said Azonto. You know, they took Azonto and they they named it Alinko or something. They even have mm -hmm. a song. They did a song too, and they were done. They are very good dancers too. Those two boys are. They are mm -hmm. good dancers, and so they were doing the Azonto dance, and they were adding other dances. And they were taking inspiration from Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal. Mm -hmm. And the video went viral. Everybody mm -hmm. was. And then the Ghanaians, Ghanaians started. Samini, I know, came out. Everybody started coming out to say, Azonto is not from Nigeria. Azonto is not from Nigeria. Azonto is not yeah. from Nigeria. We were lucky it was taken by Nigerians. If it was taken, if, if that happened with white people by now, oh, like it would be gone. Mm. But white people know how to claim and conquer. <laughs> that is something oh, they yeah, they spend all their lives mastering <laughs> how to deteriorate how to how to just scatter people's ideas and mm. claim them <laughs> so right. that's what Faisal that's what I'm hearing and I support that idea mm. that we should standardize mm. these, these, right. uh, these genre so thank you very much everyone um, definitely uh, we'll, we'll continue this conversation <laughs> next week we're going to have other me when I get into my academic dance things <laughs> we're going to have other um, uh, uh, guests on to discuss, you know, different aspects of uh, arts in Africa. Um, you can find uh, Mr. Terry Bright of Fosu on African Live Art website. He teaches Afropop and then, uh, yeah, you can connect with him. You can, you know, uh, pitch, a, pitch a class with him and then uh, have a good time. It could be a group class or individual class. Uh, I think group classes, $15 per student or per person, and then $30 uh, for individual classes. So, um, yeah, that's that's a great discussion today. We uh, appreciate everybody connecting with us and asking questions. And of course, you know, having the conversation going. Uh, anytime, www.africanliveart.com, you can get some information. And if you want to link up with anybody who, who is perhaps not on the website, yeah, just uh, send us an email on info at africanliveart.com and we can uh, get you connected. So thank you very much, everybody. And bye-bye uh, and have a good day. Peace, Peace out. out.